When in doubt, blank. How do you finish this advice? Pinky out. Always follow your nose. Sleep and then make a decision. Don't ask Reddit. They will make you feel bad about any possible decision you could ever make. Read books. When in danger or in doubt, run in circles, scream and shout. Doubt even more. Panic for hours until you pass out and wake up realizing how easy things could have been. Wipe again. What band has the perfect name? The band. I wish they'd just release a song called That Song. Hey, have you heard that song by The Band? King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Butthole Surfers. You know, they have a song called Detachable Pe- It's a really great song. Lying, it's not good. But I heard it on the radio one time when I was a kid. The Who. I always thought INXS was clever. Soundgarden is just perfect. The Cure, I think. Journey. Simple, evocative, and sounds good. Best band name ever. Guns N' Roses sounded so cool. Plus names like Axl Rose and Slash just scream rock and roll. The FBI is after you. What did you do wrong? They are finally coming after me for all the movies I downloaded illegally in 2003. That's what you get for downloading a car. Well, my lawyer said to keep quiet in these kind of situations. Well, the FBI says speak up. King Library books again. I suck at getting them back on time. Had us in the first half, not gonna lie. <laughs> no, no, don't f*** the library books. Nice try, buddy. Hey, he's got you. Is it me or have these agents gotten really pushy lately. To be honest, they probably found out about the time I stalked my crush in sixth grade. I still know where he lives. I would guess something in my search history. I released animals from their cages on a fur farm. A lot of animals on a lot of farms. Run, my pretties, run. To freedom we go. That one time I accidentally stole a Danish pastry from Wawa when I was five. It's been over 10 years and the guilt has been eating me alive. Aliens make contact and agree to come to a banquet and try human food. What are we serving? American barbecue. Bunch of different kinds of fruit. I don't know that aliens would want to eat the flesh of an animal from a different planet. I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but I wouldn't want some f***ing random base meat. Tacos. No better welcome meal than tacos. Let's make them eat some dirt. It'll be hilarious. Laughs in Earth's destruction. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be running around screaming, crying. We made the aliens eat dirt. They're blowing our shit up, man. It's over. Each country's signature meal. Let them have a taste of the best of everyone. Is human lower horn on the menu? You're telling me you want sloppy toppy from an alien? Southern fried food and barbecue. Show them that we don't fear death. Pineapple on pizza. Beans on toast. How about no? Little Debbie honey buns. I'd feed them humans. Slash J. You are now named Big, plus the last thing you ate. What's your name? Big Fried Rice? Big Marshmallow. My nickname is Stay Puffed. Big Miniature Danish. Big Spotted <coughs> Yeah, freaking right, you ate Spotted <coughs> I don't believe people actually eat that. It's not real. Big Salad. Big Banana. Big Tater Tot. Big Monster. Excuse me, sir. You ate what? I love it when you call me Big Taco. Big Anxiety anxiety pill. What is the one thing you cannot stand that people do when people interrupt conversations for no reason? Like we're having a nice conversation talking about something and then this other person that's there completely butts in and goes, oh, did you guys? And then like completely derails the conversation. It sucks. I hate it. Stand way too close to me in a checkout line. I've had to resort going to another store where not many people go to because I got tired of my personal bubble being invaded. Mistreat animals. Most people eat animals. Okay, whatever. King texting and driving. I bike. I've been hit off around three times just by people on their f***ing phones. Sorry, it's a real pet peeve. Block the aisle at supermarket. Walk slowly in front of me. I can't stand it when people constantly talk about all of the sufferings and hardships they've endured, as if they are better than others for having gone through such. Everyone suffers. It happens. Heal and move on. This attention-seeking behavior, I find it to be incredibly obnoxious. What color can disappear forever and you wouldn't mind at all? Yellow. Specifically, like, vibrant yellow. Pastel yellow is cute and I like it, but yellow. Get it out of here. That pukey green brown color. All colors are beautiful in their own place. But yes, if given a choice, the lightest shade of pink can vanish. Like every different shade of black. Just keep one shade, make it easier to match my blacks with my other blacks. Orange. Hey. You're right. I changed my answer. Yeah, I changed my answer to orange. Hot pink. It doesn't take long for it to become an eyesore. That spewy mustard yellow. Beige. What do you got against beige? It's like the most inoffensive color. The color of my green mucus. Okay. Purple. It's a dirty blue. <laughs> you. Only swordfish? That's my favorite color. Seafoam green. No, I love that color. Androids, what's your opinion on iOS? It's good when you have a whole set of Apple products, but I don't. As someone who only has an iPhone and no other Apple products, I disagree. I love iOS. Expensive. That's true. Yep. You pay loads more for loads less than what Android has, and you can't even personalize it 100%, nor have third-party apps. Also, you can't just go to any repair shop and have them fix it or have a component upgraded with ease. I think it's not bad, but it 
personally hate how it feels and functions. I think it uses KSIF for more people who aren't the most tech savvy. I'm an android, I cannot conceptualize software just like humans cannot conceptualize thought. Overrated, to me a phone is a phone. Very few options to choose from regarding the phone, only expensive options. The OS is a pain to use, couldn't even find the setting to change the default browser. You can literally search settings. If you just search default browser, it will pop up. You are just a simpleton in that case. If we talk just phone versus phone, then it's pretty much the same. But Apple's far superior on the integration between all their products. You can have an iPhone, a MacBook, an Apple TV, Apple Watch, AirPods, and they all work seamlessly together out of the box. What was that big thing that's gonna kill us all of your youth? 2012. Yeah, good times. Nuclear war. So not different from what menaces us now. Y2K. I was a kid in the 80s and AIDS was gonna kill us all. Those Aussie ads are still in the memory bank. Microwaves. All right, grandma. I was born in 1969, so global thermonuclear war. Acid rain. It's actually a decent climate success story as to why it didn't kill us all. Sounds stupid, but I somehow thought of a shark NATO. Nostradamus. Which movie do you wish you could watch for the first time again? Fight Club. We don't talk about Redacted. Bruno. Lord of the Rings. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is best watched when one doesn't know what it's about before watching it. So that's my answer. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Sure. Okay. The Dark Knight. The Goonies. I always found it astounding that a couple of kids living by the boondocks could find such forgotten treasure and get past cleverly placed traps put down by an ancient pirate, all while being chased by a crime family. I read an article recently about the Goonies, one of my faves as a kid. It highlighted all of the stereotypes in the movie, i.e. the Asian kid, Italian mobsters, the chubby boy. I watched it in a different light now. It was probably harmless stuff back in 1985. It maybe still isn't a big deal, I guess. I just think it's a good example of how everyone seems to think differently nowadays. Probably either Interstellar or Everything Everywhere All at Once. Sixth Sense. And maybe Blair Witch without knowing it wasn't real. Coraline. The Green Mile. What's something people don't talk about enough? Debt. Understand your partner's financial situation before you connected yourself to a big ol' surprise. Money in general. Kids especially need this stuff explained to them. Their own flaws. How they honestly feel or think about somebody to their face. Divorce. The amount of garbage in space. How important your credit score is. Infertility. Ending daylight savings time forever. Bruno. Okay. It's the second Bruno mentioned of the video? Death. It's real. It we'll all have to go through it. So many just ignore it. How human overpopulation is threatening the future of the human race and all other species as well. What is a rite of passage that screams, yep, I'm an adult now. Getting excited when buying new appliances. I got excited when I wanted to buy a new air fryer slash toaster oven. It was, uh, it was a moment of weakness, but <laughs> hey, it's a good toaster oven. Attending funerals of people who you thought would just always be there as a child, like parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, neighbors. You don't really realize that they don't freeze in the age you got to know them as a kid. It's not just you having birthdays, they get older too. They'll have to die one day. I don't like it. Friends start having kids on purpose. Injuring yourself by sleeping wrong. What I didn't understand, nor like the lingo Tings were using. For me, buying a house was crazy because of all the f***ing paperwork, but it really clicked when I had a kid. Like, you just get looked at and expected to have the answers to things 24-7. You don't know what the f*** you're doing. Thinking about what to have for dinner all day. Having to shop for your own groceries. When you want to impulse buy a vacuum because it's got so many cool features. Why do I still bother even looking at Prime Day sales? I don't need any more vacuums. Someone please Please stop letting me buy vacuums. Stop buying vacuums. They suck. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. When I started to support my parents instead of them supporting me. Bills. The moment you realize you have a personally bought every piece of clothing you're wearing. You bought these socks and underwear, not your parents. Buying any kind of insurance. When someone calls you sir or ma'am, accepting you're wrong when you are in fact wrong. The rare instance when your and your could both be acceptable. You're right. Hey, wait a minute. What is a sad fact about yourself? I have no friends. I suffer from a very very sexy learning disability. Sexlexia? I hear it's pretty common. I've had a headache every minute of every day for the last two years. It appears to be pretty much untreatable, so I guess I'll just have a headache all the time for the rest of my life. I have vampire syndrome, sleeping all day and awake all night. I'm lazy and too depressed to do something about it. Same, just vice versa. I've had a migraine every day for the past 15 years. Single for 10 years. I'll be that by 16. I'll be that by 21. Single for 23 years and have never been in a relationship. What's worse than a wet handshake? Living life with with wet hands, r slash hyperhidrosis, using your middle finger to tickle the other person's palm, a creamy handshake, a wet fart, or a lumpy one, a sticky handshake, sitting on a seat pre-warmed by someone else, a limp handshake, being handed wet money, when you're at a concert and a sweaty bigger man slides by you and covers you in his body slime, unwarranted warm breath in your ear, hey guys, what's up? What album has no bad song start to finish? Stevie Wonder, songs in the key of life, unplugged by both Nirvana and Alice in 
chains. At the moment for me, it's Steely Dan's Asia. Talking heads. Stop making sense. Fleetwood Mac. Rumors. That's so true. What a bop of an album. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Graceland by Paul Simon. One of the best albums ever recorded. Abbey Road. It's a really good start to, for new Beatles. Gross. Fans containing a few that may even already know. It's still a great listen for veteran fans. Can you tell I, I hate the Beatles? <laughs> One of the worst bands of all time. Mumford and Sons first album. Sigh No More. 808s and Heartbreak. Arguably his most underrated album. Jagged Little Pill. It was amazing she got to make it. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. You know, I'm gonna have to agree with Anthony Fantano here and say that MBDTF, they're a light six, or a strong six, whatever he said. It's not, it's mid, it's mid. 808s and Heartbreak way better. My personal favorite Kanye album is Yay, but to each their own. Daft Punk Random Access Memories. You accidentally log into the same Wi-Fi network as the giant screen in New York Times Square. The cast button illuminates. What do you play? Go to YouTube and find one of the most realistic emergency broadcast videos for something like alien attacks or zombies. See how long it takes for chaos to begin. A blank vid of me with a voice changer saying, David, I need my money. A countdown timer with no other context. David is cheating on you. I don't know any Davids, but I'm sure there will be a couple in their significant others in Times Square. Why does everyone hate David? Hot Night Joe. Yes, I'm playing the Lord of the Rings trilogy back to back, director's cut. No, I don't have anything better to do. Dr. Eggman's Twitter announcement. I've got to make an announcement. Shout out the Hedgehog is 100 hours of Neon Cat. The recent Rickroll remake. Mac Miller's Tiny Desk Concert. Have you ever seen someone die? And if so, what were the circumstances? Yeah, my dad. One minute I was talking to him, business as usual. The next one, he was just lying there. Heart attack. That's the only one for that one? Okay. What accent are you most attracted to? The female accent. None, really. Any accent sounds attractive with the right voice. As a Hispanic, the accent from Medellin, Colombia, is very attractive in women. I have a friend from Kazakhstan. When she has been drinking a little and is speaking softly, her accent is so f***ing sexy. She's a native Russian speaker, but her English is good. Irish, it's just really pleasing to me. It might be weird, but Scottish, the thicker, the better. As a Canadian, Australian or British accents are very attractive to me. The way girls from New Zealand say no really makes the rejection worth it. Nar, nar. Well, shall the way, could listen to it all day. What do you, hate yourself? Australian. I think with the right person, anything would be sexy, but there's a special place in my heart for a Scottish accent. Israeli. My girlfriend gets her Israeli accent back when she's mad, and it turns me on. What's the most creepiest biological fact that you know? The fact that regardless of age, health, level of physical activity, genetics, or any other biomarker you can think of, your brain can just suddenly start bleeding with no known cause or ability to prevent it, and before you know it, you're gone. New fear unlocked. You can be trapped in a coma-like state and be aware of it. Locked-in syndrome might just be the most terrifying medical condition. It's when you're stuck between being asleep and awake. You know you're awake and can hear and see things around you. However, you can't talk and you can only move your eyes, so you're unable to respond to anything. There's a frog that can apparently break its own bones and push the jagged ends out as a defense mechanism against predators. WTF. The fact that some parasites take over the brains of their prey and change its behavior to ensure their own propagation. If you encounter a polar bear, unless a miracle happens, you're dead. Certain parasites can modify their host behavior. Terrifying and really, really interesting. Toxoplasmosis is a disease known to be harmful for human pregnancies, but part of the parasite life cycle is in rats, where the parasite changes the rat brain to be less fearful of cat urine. This leads to increases in risk taking behavior in infected rats and lets the parasite pass onwards onto the next host. Terrifying. A toddler could swim through the chambers of a blue whale's heart. This might not be biological, but I think you can substitute blood for eggs in baking. I'm not entirely sure though, still need to test it. Emu females are attracted sexually to human males. <laughs> now I gotta compete with emus too? Those that can read the Chinese, Japanese, or etc. alphabets, what is the most interesting tattoo you've come across from those who are unaware? Saw a guy get a tattoo in Sanskrit which meant clueless one or something across those lines. It's kind of a funny one. Suidu, the first character means water and the second one means way, but I think the tattoo is inspired from words like Ushidu, which means way of the warrior. Problem is that is not the way of the water because it has gotten its own meaning, which means water supply or water service. So basically the tattoo just say water supply. Just by thinking, I would tell that this wasn't the plan. Someone I know got a tattoo of the coolest Japanese symbols. It translates to umbrella. A girl who tattooed on her arm, while the word itself means chicken in Chinese, it generally means prostitute. A friend of mine had a Cambodian guy's name tattooed on his arm quite prominently, but it wasn't a surprise. He knew what it was because the Cambodian guy got his name tattooed on his arm too. They were both drunk. Makes for a much better story than just getting something you don't know tattooed on you. Kind of the opposite of your question. When I was in Japan, I saw someone with just the word liquid on their shirt. A friend of mine had a tattoo in Japanese, which meant that's 
a lie. Once saw a dude get a tattoo that said on his chest, means stupid or idiot. One of my previous bosses had a Viking rune tattoo deal that he thought said, I am the boss. I had to refrain from ever telling them, no, that it really said, I have a small d I don't believe that for a second. There's no way that Viking rune that said, I am the boss is the same thing as I have a small dick. I don't get that. I, that's, that's probably a fake story. What's your most common intrusive thought? When I'm looking over a cliff or driving in traffic and my ass goes, jump, hit that car. Did I lock the door? I did, right? Maybe I should go back and check. No, that's silly. I know I did. Didn't I? Happens with house, car, fence, etc. all the time. I have quite horrific intrusive thoughts. My worst one is definitely intrusive thoughts I get about my family. For anyone who needs a reminder, your intrusive thoughts are not you. Your intrusive thoughts directly go against your morals. That's why they're intrusive. If they gross you out or scare you, the fact that you know it's wrong is good. It means it's not actually you. The more you try to prevent intrusive thoughts, the more prominent they are. If I said, don't think about a pink elephant, what are you thinking about right now? If you get them, then acknowledge them. Acknowledge that they're intrusive and go on with your day. No one actually cares about you. They only pretend so they can take advantage of you. That I've fallen behind and I'll never catch up or will have to settle in everything in life as a result. I dwell upon some past embarrassment that nobody else remembers. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm a fake. Imposter syndrome is rough. Thinking about what bad things can happen rather than focusing on what happening that is good. Whenever I'm eating with other people, I suddenly start thinking I'm going to choke and spit food or water onto another person. I hear the call of the void. Anytime I'm on the roof of a tall building, any kind of precipice or cliff, the fucking Hoover Dam, I get a powerful urge to jump. What is a discontinued product you wish would come back? House kits you could buy from Sears and afford on minimum wage. What? What? That's so cool. I just looked it up. That's awesome. McDonald's fried apple pie. It was far and away superior to the baked apple pie. Jello pudding pops. Crystal Pepsi. Vianetta ice cream cake. Cinnamon Cheetos. They were only a limited edition for a year and they were so good. They come around every winter. I saw them last year. I saw them the year before that. They come around. They're just in a different bag. Diet Cherry Vanilla Dr. Pepper in a can. Neapolitan candies from Brock's. Gas for 36 cents in the 1970s. Who's the most misunderstood fictional character? Frankenstein's monster. He's a lot more complex than the old movies suggest. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. You're not supposed to side with him. You're just meant to understand why he did the stuff. Joker is not someone you should be idolizing. His relationship with Harley Quinn is quite obviously abusive. The movie is supposed to show you why he does the things he does, not to promote them. If you're counting couples, I think Romeo and Juliet are severely misunderstood. They are touted as the embodiment of love, but they literally knew each other for days before they got married and then killed themselves. And Romeo had just been pinning over his precious love right when he met Juliet. They were basically two infatuated teenagers who got caught up in family politics and died for no reason reason. Snape. Being a double agent doesn't absolve you being an absolute <laughs> for your whole life. Ross Geller from Friends. He's my imagination of a dude labeling himself as nice guy who isn't valued by others. Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure the guy just wanted to tell people to be chill with one another, but his fandom turned into a bloodthirsty judgmental cult obsessed with power and controlling other people's lives. Squidward. Jenny from Forrest Gump. It's wild how many people hate her and ignore that she was so screwed up because her father was molesting her. She was a victim, not a villain. Hell from Hey Arnold. Yeah, she's a bitch and a blowhard, but if you came from her family, then you would be a bitch. Arnold is the only bright spot in her life. Hades. In most adaptations of Greek mythology, they portray Hades as evil. What people often forget is that he's still a god and shouldn't be confused with Satan. Compared with most of the Greek pantheon, he's quite altruistic. If you gloss over the part of him kidnapping Persephone. Mr. Krabs. Draco Malfoy. He's not evil, nor wants to be evil. What's the worst written scene of any show or movie you've seen? Somehow, Palpatine returned. Yeah, don't get me started. Started. The Storm versus Toad scene in the first X-Men movie. Terrible on all accounts. The basketball scene in Catwoman. One-on-one. -on -one. Riverdale. When in prison, Archie says that nothing someone does will ever be as important as high school football. NCIS hacker scene. Imagine you can double your hacking by having two hackers type on the same keyboard while shouting the words IP and gigabyte at each other. Every scene in Birdemic. 365 days. I'm not going to say a scene because the whole movie is one bad scene. The scene in the room where he says, Lisa, you're tearing me apart. Movie 43, Hugh Jackman with balls on the chin. How I Met Your Mother, Season 9. In the first Final Destination film, there's a scene where one of the characters gets hit by a bus. The producers expected there to be so much excitement and shock from this kill in cinema that they purposely added a really sh unnecessary scene of the main characters just drinking water or something so that people could watch while calming down. The whole Camp Rock movie is extremely weird and cringe. Last season of Game of Thrones was particularly awful considering how amazing the previous seasons were. What is a 90s song that will always be a 
Banger. Prodigy by Firestarter. Regulate by Warren G and Nate Dog. New Radicals, You Get What You Give. The greatest 90s one-hit wonder of all one-hit wonders. All the Small Things by Blink-182. Blur, Song 2. Gangster's Paradise. Zombie by The Cranberries. California Love. Closing Time by Semisonic. Hadaway. What is Love? Sandstorm. You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette. Friday, I'm in Love by The Cure. Torn by Natalie Imbruglia. No, Imbrugila. No, Imbruglia. Semi-Charmed Life by Third Eye Blind. What's the last country on earth you would visit? North Korea. Understandable. Australia. I'm sorry. Y'all are nice people, but there's way too many spiders that are bigger than my face. Russia. Same. I'm Russian. I'm completely baffled that Australia and New Zealand made this list. Texanistan, where freedom goes to die. Atlantis. What is the best way to respond to, is this a date? Seemingly the best response is to just get up and leave. At least that's what everyone does to me. <laughs> Once I said, it's a business proposal. We didn't date for long. Yes, Laura, we've been married for 1.5 years. It's safe to say we're dating. One minute, I have to ask Reddit what they think. No, this is a robbery. Proceed to rob. No, this is Patrick. Do you want it to be one? That's actually a good answer, I think. Uh, weird to see a real answer in one of these. Everything's a date. That's how calendars work. I think it's a prune, actually. Okay, I guess I like that one since a date is also like of dried up fruit, so sure. I actually had this happen once. I said, why, yes it is. Anyways, we've been married five years now. Oh, congratulations. Nah, this is a make-a-wish contract, and that's how you kill the vibe instantly. Damn, I got catfished by an Excel spreadsheet. What food doesn't taste as good as it used to? Planters cheese balls. Those things were like the food of the gods when I was a kid in the 80s. When they brought them back for a while a few years ago, I bought a few cans, only to find out they tasted like disappointment. You really can't go home again. Tim Horton's donuts. They used to be the bomb when they were made in store. Then restaurant brands bought them and decided it was better slash cheaper to make them in a factory and ship them to stores to have them heated and topped. Nah, I miss old Tim Hortons. I refuse to go there now. Way to go, Burger King. People already don't go to you, so you had to ruin Tim Hortons. Hostess snack cakes. I haven't had those in a long time, mostly because like sugar does weird things to me now. Juicy fruit gum. They ruined the flavor 20 years ago. It tastes bitter after 20 seconds. They should just discontinue the gum. My grandma's cooking. She left me her recipes when she passed, but I still can't recreate her magic. Uh, keep trying. I'm sure you'll get it at some point. Then you can be the grandma. KFC has gone way downhill in the past 25 years. Pop-Tarts. They are chalky slash pasty and so thin now. I don't remember them ever being that thick. It might have just been because when we were smaller, things felt bigger. Nearly all mass market American candy bars have gone downhill. Even Hershey bars. Stuff tastes like brown wax. Good gourmet slash specialty bars abound, but they'll cost. Worth it though. Peaches. I've commented on this many times, but the last several years, the peach crop has sucked. I haven't had a good, juicy, non-mealy peach in a long time. I don't know what's going on with the peach farms and trees, but they're just not as good. What harmful ideas are being taught to children? Oh God, I don't think I have enough time for that. I used to work at a movie theater back in the day, and I'll never forget witnessing a kid pick up their trash on their way out like a responsible person, and their mother instructing them to put it back down because it's not their responsibility. Probably way more harmful things being taught to kids, but the story just came back to my mind. That's just despicable. Like, sure, they have people that come in and clean the theater after you leave, but just be nice. Pick up after yourself. It's so easy. External validation. Constantly chasing likes and followers, the unbearable weight of keeping up appearances, lives and bodies that aren't perfect seem to have no value. Ultimately, wanting external validation isn't horrible, but don't dedicate your entire life to it because it'll just make you feel worse. That crying is bad. Parents don't learn to regulate their own emotions and expect their kids to do it. Then they start suppressing crying, and then they grow up to be adults with zero emotional regulation. It's a cycle. Oh yeah, that one's a fun one. Uh, I haven't cried in years, and it's not by choice. That if someone teases slash bullies you, that person may like you. Basically teaching kids at a young age that it's okay when someone is being mean and rude to them. I think the bully teasing thing only applies applies to like kindergarten. After that, everyone's just evil. Your parents are always right until they're not. That questioning authority is a bad thing. Obviously pick your battles on this one, but yeah, just blindly believing authority, uh-huh, that'll get you real far. Teaching them they're responsible for how other people feel. 
Jill. Mommy is so sad you won't hug her. Child then feels obligated to hug her to make her feel better. Think about what this means as an adult. They don't have an opinion. I'm breaking generational curses by simply listening to my kids. That they're dumb and don't know anything. Kids are incredibly bright and will call you out on your shit. For as dumb as kids can be, y'all are pretty smart. Men of Reddit, what is something you wish other men would stop doing? Caring about over masculinity? That's one. Insulting their friends to look cool in front of a girl. Yeah, it's just a low blow. Don't do it. That thing where a girl turns you down so you suddenly call her an ugly bee. It's really not hard to not be a rude piece of shit. And it makes you sound pathetic. Have some respect and imagine your grandmother could hear you. Fellas, remember, women don't owe you anything. So if they deny you, just take it on the chin and walk away. Not washing hands after using public bathrooms. Did we not learn anything in the past three years? Being overly horny and hitting on women nonstop who clearly are uncomfortable. It's hard to watch. There's a time and a place, and if you are at that time and place, but they're still not into it, then, uh, take the hint. I wish y'all would stop trying to be Mr. Tough, Arrogant Guy when an attractive woman is in your presence. Joining MLMs and being really vague about what they do. I don't want an exclusive chance to gain you as a mentor. I sat next to you in pre-algebra and know that the concept of math escapes you. Also, stop renting luxury vehicles for a weekend and pretending you made it. Maybe I'm just a hater, but if your whole plan is to not just fake it till you make it, but to flex till you make it, then I'm not interested in whatever opportunity you're trying to sell me. Peeing on the seat. You're a grown man. Lift the seat or sit if you can't get all your piss dribbles in the hole. You might have hentai in your name, but you are spinning. Being afraid to open up to each other. Fellas, is it gay to have emotions? Acting overly manly and not smiling. Like, chill man, I'm not trying to pee on your territory. How do you accept being ugly? Slowly. That's that's how I've done it. With the simple technique called denial. You too can become as handsome as me. My grandma used to say, everybody looks good in blue. If you don't look good in blue, then I guess you're just ugly. So I guess buy a jean jacket and go from there. Plenty of ugly people out there, man. I've known plenty of them to be happy, plenty of friends, happily married, and otherwise successful. Plenty of people out there who don't just hate people because of their face. I'm ugly and I'm proud. I'm ugly and I'm proud. What's something you have that you're 99% sure no one else in the comments will have? A guitar pick tossed to me by Johnny Cash during a concert in 1988. Aha, uh -huh, no, I got that one too. A basket made by my grandma from an armadillo she killed because it was eating up her garden. The nose and tail touch, making the handle. Edit slash update. I am out of town this week. Pinky promised to come back with a picture. And we'll never see the picture. Unless we do and uh, whoa, here it is. Wow, that's cool. A copy of the original shooting script of The Princess Bride, autographed by nearly the entire cast. A giant six foot fiberglass Hello Kitty statue from outside the Sanrio store in Japan. One of the invitations to Hogwarts used in the filming of the first Harry Potter movie. That actually would be pretty cool, but I feel like a lot of people would have them, you know, just considering how many letters that kid got. What does your country do the best? Queuing by the looks of things in London at the minute. African prince that needs 50 million pounds after his father's death has entered the chat. Start world wars and losing them. Play hockey. Hockey? What is that? You made that up. Sleep after lunch. Are you from Middle Earth? Are you in the Shire? Cycling. Uh, I mean, everybody bikes, but I'm gonna say France? Schnitzel. Oh, the guys that suck at world wars? Halloumi and corruption. I, I have no idea what that is. Nasi Lemak. Coconut rice? I uh, still lost. No clue. Cars, beer, and bureaucracy. I was gonna guess America, but I also don't think 90% of people know how to say bureaucracy, so... Who's the best comedian of all time, in your opinion? Bob Newart. Just so his name's on this thread. Dude needs a mention. That he does, because I've never heard of him. George Carlin. Honorable mention to Bill Burr. Doug Stanhope. I scrolled down so far and didn't see his name once. Sorry to anyone that's already posted him. Billy Connolly. The most windswept and interesting as well. Monty Python as a group. I don't think there's been a single more influential comedy act than Flying Circus. Robin Williams had absolutely insane stand-up sets. Just absolutely manic. George Carlin was in the game a long time and was a master at reinventing himself to stay relevant. Mitch Hedberg was brilliant at taking you in one direction than doing a complete 180 at the punchline. But I gotta go with Steve Martin. His stand-up was brilliant, completely self-deprecating, and totally bonkers. We're lucky he's still with us and putting out good content. Robin Williams. Rest in peace.
peace, King. What sauce do you eat with your fries? Raisin cane sauce. All right, uh, here's another thing to murder me for. I don't like raisin canes. It's kind of mid. Salt. Not necessarily a sauce, so try again. Whataburger spicy ketchup. I still haven't tried it, even though there's finally one in my town. I, I, uh, I'll, I'll get on it. Gravy. Ooh, you're talking about poutine. Ooh, oh, I want it so bad. Aioli. On the side. Tzatziki? 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 I'll never learn how to say that, and I've never tried it. Honey mustard. Eh, it's a safe choice. Malt vinegar. Oh, that, I don't know why, that sounds really gross. Barbecue sauce. Eh, I guess it depends on what fries you're having. If they're like McDonald's, then maybe not. Ketchup and mayo. I feel like Wendy's really thrust mayo into my fast food experience, and I, I'm not mad. What are some traditions and customs that have fallen by the wayside? If you look at old homesteads, you can sometimes see two cedar trees in the front of the house. These were planted when a couple got married. Oh, interesting. I never knew that. Sunday dinner with the fam. Contacting people only during certain hours. That goes for co-workers, too. Wearing hats. Everyone except very small children wore a hat almost all the time. It's also one of the traditions that was both common worldwide and has also disappeared worldwide. Informing job applicants that someone else was hired. I still think it should be illegal for them to just never respond to you, especially if you're waiting on a callback. Like, wh I've wasted my time. People used to wear black for a month after a spouse passed away. Well, you only have so many black clothes, so, eh. Actually training new employees instead of only looking for candidates that can hit the ground running. Yeah, seemingly the new training policy is to send the trainee off with another employee who barely got trained themselves, so then you kind of just get depreciating knowledge of the job as time goes on. What song has the most disturbing lyrics of all time? One Way or Another by Blondie. Most of the lyrics are literally messages Debbie Harry got from a stalker. Also, Every Breath You Take by the police. Every move you make, every vow you break, every smile you fake, every claim you stake, I'll be watching you. Yeah, really creepy. The end of Daddy by Korn when Jonathan Davis is just screaming and crying in anguish. Immortal Technique, Dance with the Devil. This is one that's always like, this isn't so bad. Why did this used to bother me so much? Through the first half of the song, and then the next part comes on and like, nah, I'm good. Don't need to relive that again. Pumped up kicks. Still a banger. That's so wrong. Have an upvote. Honestly, Jeremy by Pearl Jam. The longer I teach, the more it gets to me. Every breath you take grows more sinister every time I hear it. The End. A song by The Doors. On their first record. Kim by Eminem. What is the most disturbing book you have ever read? Five Days at Memorial. Non-fiction account of what happened at a large New Orleans hospital during and after Katrina. Ooh, that actually sounds really fascinating. Anyone else ever read that book when they were younger called Unwind? Don't know why it was available in our middle school library, but it was about unwanted children getting sent to camps where instead of being killed, their bodies were legally disassembled for people in need of transplants. Maybe it's more effed up in my memory than it is in reality, but I remember being deeply disturbed by it. Misery by Stephen King. The horror and suffering the main character went through was easily felt. The insanity of the person keeping them captive and the way they were able to look sane in front of others and the police was chilling. We need to talk about Kevin. Unsettled the absolute <laughs> out of me. Apt Pupil by Stephen King, too. In terms of horror horror, The Passage by Justin Cronin was excellently scary. Rage or The Longest Walk. But really anything I've read by Chuck Palahniuk. If I said his name wrong, I'm sorry. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a genius, okay? A Child Called. It was no picnic. The Painted Bird. All right, people, when we're doing these, you gotta put the author in there so we can look them up. Acceptable Risk. It's realistic fiction based on the idea that the Salem witch trials were caused by a hallucinogenic fungus in rye flour. It was a really good read, but also, yeesh. Black Beauty. Seriously, I read this to my elementary school child every night over course of a couple weeks. The brutality and animal cruelty was something else. Eventually, I switched to another book for a nighttime story, but I read that sucker to the end. Who knew this book was like that. Children of the Dust. I had to read it in
American elementary school in the 80s. It was about the survivors of a nuclear war, and it was pretty horrifying. I read The Exorcist on a stormy winter 12-hour night shift at a gas station. Back in the 60s, most gas stations were just basically metal sheds. The whole building rattled all night. Couldn't put the book down. Probably had only three customers all shift. Still went to see the movie, though. Really scared the shit out of myself. When I was taking psychology, I read a book called Kids Who Kill, and it was a book about young kids with psychopathy. What is the worst question you have ever been asked? When I was 17 and my only brother, 19, died unexpectedly, each of my parents, divorced, asked why it couldn't have been me, separately. That is beyond messed up. I'm so sorry. What's those on your face? Acne. Do you have any friends? You seem like you're kind of awkward and don't have friends. We'd never even met in real life, so needless to say, he got blocked straight after. Why are you so quiet? Oh, it's my favorite question. It's because I don't want to friggin' talk to you. Your husband will leave you if you don't wear nicer clothes. You know that, right? Said my mom when I was literally not going anywhere and staying home all day wearing comfy clothes. She just won the game of who's going to the retirement home. Why aren't you normal? A step-parent asked me that multiple times when I was 12. I was just a bit clumsy and shy. Why don't you have kids? In this economy? Why would I do that? If every man simply disappeared, what would happen to the world? The Taliban probably probably wouldn't be as much of a problem. Thanks to cryobanks, we'd likely see more men reappear within a decade. Question is, where are we going to? Is it a new planet, or are we just dying? Not necessarily dying or getting sent somewhere else, more just like a Thanos, just a fair bit of lesbianism. Moderate to severe lesbianism. Heavy to industrial lesbianism. I don't know why the term industrial lesbianism is so funny to me. It will become no man land. R slash dad jokes. Well, technically, no more dad jokes. Hey, women can be great fathers, so they can make great dad jokes as well. It's a no man's world. It's raining no men's. No man in the mirror. We are finally free. Toilet seats would stay down. I never understood this. It's like either just put it back down or aim better. I don't, I don't get it. The next generation of men from the sperm banks are going to be living a very happy life. What's up with all these threads trying to pit the sexes against each other? Notice that as well. The men tired of men and women tired of women post yesterday made me really uncomfortable too. I don't know. Easy for Convo to get heated discussing such things. What is falsely seen as a sign of maturity? Having a spouse and kids. Being in a relationship. Having kids. Working 60 plus hours a week. Nobody should ever work 60 plus hours a week. Like, it, that's inhumane. Being above humor and putting others down for joking around. When you are a true adult, you can also know how to be a child. Not acting childish. Sounds so strange, but the most mature people usually have no problem tapping into their childish or silly sides. Immature people overdo it trying to be cool. Not apologizing to younger people. Being an adult means being the bigger man or woman. So uh, apologize when you're wrong. A beard. Mine started to be full with 14, but I was still a friggin' kid though. Having a high position in a hierarchical company. Having a career require very specialized expertise. I know doctors and lawyers who are incredibly emotionally immature. Their kids are usually good evidence of this hidden secret. You're the last person on earth. What's the first thing you do? The first thing I do is go to the hardware store and get a ton of those triangular door stops. The rubber ones you get to jam under a door to keep it open. The last thing I want to do is end up trapped in some parking garage stairwell and slowly die of thirst. Break into the fanciest house I can find and live in it. Gather supplies, read survival slash farming books. Oh, Bill Murray's house. Just be careful of any zombies walking around. Pile up books to read from the ruins of the library, then promptly break my glasses. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Everything will be 100% off. I'm going on a shopping spree. Start getting the last word on Reddit posts. I mean, that's under the assumption the internet still works because if there's nobody, then how is the internet getting run, huh? Take off my clothes. I will be living naked now. Till a f***ing snake goes into your ass. Mmm, sounds nice. Alright, get him out of here. Get, get him out of here. Live in Costco. That does sound fun, but I don't know how well insulated Costco's are. It's all concrete. Start turning the lights off. I hate light pollution at night. Ooh, that would actually be super cool. With nobody on Earth, you just turn the power grid off and boom, you finally get to see the stars. Drive to Area 51 and hang out with the aliens. See what's going on in the Vatican Library. Well, you're gonna have to try and get there first unless you're already in Italy. Assuming animals 
animals are still alive, I'd go try to join a band of gorillas. Teach them rock, paper, scissors or something. Yeah, good luck with that before they smash your brain in. What do people pretend to like? Mandatory corporate fun. Oh, it's just the worst. It's so bad when they try it. Their job. What? No, I love my job. I love delivering pizza all day and driving my car and not getting tipped. Gold leaf on food. It makes no sense. Why did we start doing it to make it look fancy? It's useless. When someone sings happy birthday to you, you just gotta sit there and it's weird. You don't know what to do with your hands and uh. Obnoxious over singing in television talent shows. Gender reveal parties. I don't know how we're still doing it after the um, many, many wildfires. Whatever celebrity died most recently? The queen? Uh, she's just kicking it with Reagan and Thatcher now. Their spouse's BFF. Also the best friend's spouse. The present no one wanted. Jeez, you sound like my dang dad. Food answers only. Where do you live? Ambergris and rupee, baby. That's where I live. Meatballs and mashed potatoes with lingonberry jam on the side. Sweden. Also, Ikea. Poutine. I was just gonna say that, Tabernacle. Gonna guess Quebec? I got mad beef with Quebec. Not like the real country, but in civilization. They went to war with me for no reason. I'm still mad. South of cheese, east of corn. Illinois? Correct. Euros. Grease in it. Cheese steaks, soft pretzels, tasty cakes, and water ice. Yo, Philly! Gumbo. Louisiana? Fish and chips. UK. French fries and coleslaw on a sandwich. Also, Heinz ketchup. Hey, Pittsburgh. Bagel. New York. Are you sure? Because uh, I would imagine pizza, New York. It could be too basta. Whoa. My burrito has French fries in it. SoCal. I love a California burrito. Honestly, they are a little slept on, even though the French fries are, ba they're just potatoes. So a potato burrito is uh, California, whatever. In 50 years, what will people be nostalgic for? Owning something you don't pay a subscription for. It's more likely than you think. I heard BMWs, you have to pay a subscription service to use heated seats. What? BMW being confident that the person they see on screen is a real person and not AI. I have a can of frozen themed chicken noodle soup that I plan to sell when I'm 70. So hopefully that, cause I don't have a lot of money in my retirement fund. Privacy. Even babies are overexposed today. Being able to be anonymous online. I'm sure we'll still find ways to hide ourselves. Movies made 30 years from now. Nostalgia always runs in 20 year cycles. Keys. Even more specific, vehicle keys. Even even more specific, Alicia Keys. I guess even more specific, the Black Keys. Well, I'll be 110, so I'm going to say breathing. If you could bankrupt one company, which one would you pick and why? Nestle is the scum of the earth. Nestle owns the scum of the earth and will now charge you for each drop of it that is taken. Nestle is copyrighted scum of the earth, so you will have to pay to use those words. Bank of America. I deposited $750 one time and somehow they still can't find it five years later. Even though I had the receipt for the deposit, they still would not honor it. Frig them and their mothers. Ticketmaster. Venue fee. Ticketmaster fee. Seat reservation fee. Floor space reservation fee. Print at home fee. Will call fee. Scan on your phone fee. Popular band fee. Unpopular band fee. Because we can fee. Frig you fee. The biggest scam out of all of them is the convenience fee. It's not being a convenience anymore. You are the only way to buy these tickets. I think if you want to see the world burn, Deutsche Bank would be high on the list. Also, it would be well-deserved. Five-minute crafts. Let's see if they can make a life hack for company getting bankrupt. A few months ago, my kids put on a lemonade stand in our driveway. It was cute, and they were selling cups of lemonade for a dollar a cup. After a few hours, they made around $100 from sales and tips, which was cool as a dad to see. The following week, the kids across the street did the same thing. I choose them. Meta. They're doing that to themselves already. The biggest crime other than Zuckerberg is that they forced Oculus to change their name. They pioneered VR and no, yeah, no meta made it actually. Haha. -ha. I couldn't pick just one. Can I have an easier question? Autism speaks. They don't represent us. Facebook or meta? That would bring down so many others attached to it. Maximum destruction. <laughs> Nestle. They are one of the worst companies on earth right now. Look up the Nestle water scandal. Not just water scandal, chocolate slave farming, and third world mother breast milk formula. Edit. Horrible syntax. Also, Nestle pushes their baby formula in third world countries to mothers with the BS that their formula is better than breast milk. Not only that, they give it away for 
free at the beginning, only just long enough for the mother's breast milk to dry up, and then they have to buy the formula. The Murdoch Group. The amount of damage that man has done to the UK, US, and Australia should see him imprisoned for life. Realistically, what's stopping us from world peace? Greed, stupidity, lack of empathy. The world is run by people who have no interest in peace or letting everyone else thrive. Scarcity, whether real or perceived. Only justification for tribalism is that it secures resources to be allocated amongst the tribe. Even if we somehow eradicated propaganda that make people believe in false scarcity, we'd still have to deal with artificial scarcity that is propped up by corporate government slash corporations, and then too remains the real deal of finity in nature. Browse Reddit for five minutes. People just like that rise to power. Humans. Yeah, it seems like no matter what else might change, humans are gonna human. The human nature of tribalism. We'd all have to agree on what that means first. Profit. 34th rule of acquisition. War is good for business. That's why America's so good at war, baby. Difference of opinion. I disagree. What's the fascination with big boobs? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> do I really have to? I mean, let's see what people said. I just like when they stick out more than my gut. Signed, a woman. Boing, boing. Yes, yes, quite. Oh, wait, no. Ew, I'm not listening to Toe Sucker. Gross. Life cold. Life hard. Be warm. Be soft. Boobs are awesome. And when they're bigger, there's more boob. Booba. Monkey brain correlates sexual attraction of large breasts to be a desirable trait for a partner. Monkey brain be like, ooh, big mommy milkies. She'll feed many a babe. <laughs> I read this in an Adam Sandler voice. I don't know how to, how would he do that? I love how in the other related questions, everyone's like, oh, it doesn't matter what size boobs are boobs. But when big boobs are mentioned, our brains wiring <laughs> neuron activation, me. I'm not really into anybody, to be honest. Brain, what if she had bobs? Me, you crazy son of a bitch. I'm in. What car says I have money, but I'm not showing it off? Toyota Land Cruiser. Cruiser, $80,000 SUV and super capable, but to the untrained eye, it's a Highlander. 90s Toyota 4x4. I think that's also a 4Runner still? Would that be a 4Runner? I don't know. Pick a Volvo. You really don't see them out on the road that much. Anything older that's properly maintained and running well. Anything older that's not rusted out in places that put salt on the road in the winter. Toyota Avalon Limited. Ooh, I just looked that up and it that does look pretty nice. It kind of just looks like a Corolla, but a little fancy. Fancier. Some pickup trucks are surprisingly expensive, but don't look like it. 1989 Chevy Celebrity. 1983 Toyota Corolla. What is the creepiest thing you've ever experienced in your home? One night a few years ago when I was sleeping, a big wolf spider crawled on my face. Oh, God. oh no. Oh. It's not like an extremely creepy thing, but still. I was living with my mom and stepdad when it happened, and that day they were out, so I had to look after the cat. At some point, I'm in the living room and the cat is at the bottom of the staircase, staring at the door as if he saw something. Now, before I explain what happened, the door was locked and we have a curtain in front of it. Literally, no one can knock on the door or even reach it. So I asked the cat, something up there? He stared at me and I suddenly heard the doorknob, like someone was forcibly trying to open it, and it came from inside of the house. It couldn't come from outside. I stayed there, frozen, looking at the door, and then decided to go back to my room and wait for my mom and stepdad to get back. It's the only time it ever happened to me. Look, if it's cold outside, the ghosts are cold. Let them in. One night when I was about 11 and home alone, an intense thunder and lightning storm developed. During a loud clap of thunder and brilliant lightning flash, it illuminated the entire two-story house, I heard a spooky sound simultaneously with the thunder. Seems that one of the chains that holds the heavy weights on the grandfather clock in the foyer broke, allowing the weight to whack the dong and bang the pendulum as it crashed into the bottom of the clock case. At that point, I was convinced that something evil was lurking in the house. So I stayed in my room, cowering with the door locked until my parents finally returned home. We had moved to a new rental house a few months before giving birth to my second son. First son was six years old. I was working full time and very tired after working all day, coming home doing housework, cooking dinner, and helping with homework, etc. After bathing my older son and getting him in bed, I would fall asleep on the sofa most nights before going to bed. One night, I thought I heard my son walking in the hallway, but when I opened my my eyes, I saw an older gentleman holding a little girl's hand walking down the hall. When I jumped up, they just disappeared. This happened quite often and I thought I was going crazy. After
After about a year or so, we purchased our own home and was packing to move. My older son and I were in his bedroom getting his things in order. He asked me so calmly if the man and little girl were going with us. I had never mentioned this to anyone. When I inquired about whom he was talking, he stated the ones that live in his closet. I immediately got cold chills and knew I had not been hallucinating. He was not scared about it at all, just matter of fact about it. I was so relieved they did not move with us. One night when I was asleep, I sensed that someone was watching me sleep. I looked around, but no one was there. After I went back to sleep, I heard some footsteps that went pitter-patter and an apologetic voice saying, I'm sorry. Still, no one was there. Ooh, spooky. At two in the morning, I was smoking a cigarette on the front step of my apartment. The entire time I was standing there, there was an absolute silence. All of a sudden, a train horn sounds. The five-year-old child next door screams and a sudden wind gust slams the open door against my shoulder. I swear to God, I thought a ghost was attacking me for exactly one second. My eyes were watering and my heart was racing. I think that stuff cut two years off my life. For the record, the young child yelled possibly because she and her mother were playing. They always stayed up late. 2 a.m. is extremely late for a five-year-old. WTF? When my daughter was two, I was snuggling with her in my bed and we fell asleep. I woke up to my dog, who was in the backyard at the time, going nuts. I rolled off the bed and stepped into the hallway and there was an old lady standing there staring at me. I froze and said, um, can I help you? She answered, I was cold. Then she turned around, confused, and headed for the door. I followed her out and asked her if she needed me to call someone, but she just took off. I called the police non-emergency line and apparently she is pretty well known to them. She has dementia and lives down the street from me with family. I have never accidentally left the door unlocked again. At least she didn't try and stay in the house and she just willingly left. That That's at least the safe thing there. What is the best struggle meal. Red beans and rice. Spam and rice. The poor Hawaiian kid special. I'll say it a million times. Spam is some of the best meat, food, whatever. So good. I love spam. I had spam the other day in a sandwich and I had some spam before that with some eggs. Oh, so good. Noodles. Nothing wrong with instant noodles. Toast with butter and sugar. The comfort food I had when poor as f was grilled cheese that you dip in warm tomato soup. Tastes like pizza and I still do it from time to time. Good old classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Soft fried egg added to a tortilla with cheese and salsa. Put back into the pan for a minute to get the tortilla crispy. A nice big bowl of sleep for dinner. I used to just put a slice of bread with a slice of cheese in the microwave for like 20 seconds and then roll it up. Beans on toast. That's why they call me the baked bean queen. Ew, are you British? Disgusting. Which conspiracy theory do you believe and why? The killer clown craze from 2016 was a guerrilla marketing campaign for the IT remake that got way out of hand. Even if you uninstalled McAfee, it still comes back. The CIA keeps posting this question to Reddit to see how many people are into them. I'm, I'm gonna assume that means on to them? I don't think anyone's into the CIA. My fave conspiracy theory that the T-Rex arms are short little arms. Turn them around and they're tiny wings like an ostrich. I fucking love this. I'm down to believe this and you'll have to show me an intact T-Rex or invent time travel for me to do anything but quietly believe otherwise. That the dittos are failed new clones. I know this one is deep. Guys, I'm, I'm gonna talk about Pokemon, all right? Think about it. Ditto and Mew are both pink and the shinies for both of them are both light blue. It's the same thing. They're the only two Pokemon that can know transform. They, they, oh God, it's so cool. It's such a good theory. It's so cool. Andrew Tate is John F. Kennedy's daughter. Excuse me? TikTok is intentionally feeding American children dumbing content while contrarily feeds Chinese children math and engineering content owned by China's government. Also, it's likely backdooring your phone if you have the app to take info of yours. Too many conspiracy theories all at once? This one is just a fact. Ivana Trump did not fall downstairs by herself. I also think there are probably more classified documents buried with her. I just saw the most evil person post. So who is the best or most saintly person alive today? Probably someone you don't even know and is not famous. The person who buys the needy food and doesn't post it on social media. Dolly Parton. James Harrison. The special antibodies in his blood have saved the lives of two million infants. He has donated every week until the age of 81, risking his own health to save the lives of others. He's a hero. The person reading this. I love you, homie. Aw, stop. Oh, so sweet. David Attenborough. For sure. My mom. Betty White. <laughs> they said alive. God. Got him. Get it? Because Betty White is dead. According to the local news, it's John Cena. What is one thing that tells you with 100% certainty that someone is boring? 99% of the time, someone has introduced themselves as an entrepreneur. My night has been very, very boring. All they talk about is other people and it's always negative. The only thing they talk about is themselves. People that need to cut off someone else's story or conversation just to correct something they said. Interesting people are interesting. In other words, people who don't take an interest and are not curious about others in a conversation are boring. Not asking questions from 
you and just talking about themselves is a clear red flag. If they always complain about being bored, what's the saying? If it smells like shit everywhere you go, you should check your shoe. Something like that. Only boring people get bored. They like Jeopardy. It's me. I'm someone. Hey, nothing wrong with Jeopardy. Jeopardy's fun. I don't really listen to music. I would. I could never be friends with someone who doesn't listen to music. Even if it's music I don't like. I'd rather be friends with someone who listens to country music than someone who doesn't listen to music at all. As long as they're not a conservative. <laughs> Ooh. What song are you currently listening to? A Spotify ad. Want a break from the ads? Okay. Welcome to the internet. I believe that's Bo Burnham. Regulate by Warren G featuring Nate Dogg. Killer Queen by Queen. Is that a JoJo's reference? Bad Religion. Feel Good Ink by the Gorillas. Sea Bat. Are you- are you f***ing? <laughs> <laughs> Al Green, Stay Together. My Future by Billie Eilish. First time I'm listening to it, it's nice. Du Hast by Romstein. Who by Fire by Leonard Cohen. Recently fixed up my old CD player for the nostalgia. I once pronounced when I was in middle school, I pronounced Leonard as Leonard in front of my entire um, eighth grade language arts class. I got laughed at. Dang! Mac Miller featuring Anderson Pock. The Sound of Silence. No, literally. No music is playing. What do you hate about the education system? How grades are so emphasized in order for a student to pass instead of if they actually understand or not. Most students only do what they have to to pass, not to learn and actually understand what they're being taught. People other than teachers making curriculum. People who have never been in a damn classroom telling me how to do my job. How they talk to you. The authoritarianism of it all. The whole educational system is based on teachers' unpaid labor. The people that come up with the curriculum. I live in Texas, so... Gestures broadly. How do you feel about guys with painted nails? If I could live in a house without judgment, I would have my nails painted all the time. I just think it's fun. Personally. Just for me. It doesn't concern me at all. What really concerns me are people that care in the slightest about some guy painting his nails. David Bowie, Mark Bolin, and Alice Cooper have been doing it since 1971. If they're using them for assassinations, like if they're poisonous and they're going around scratching people, then yeah, I have issues with it. Otherwise, who f***ing cares? Unless it really clashes with the color of their clothes, then call the fashion police, maybe. My wife found it very hot when I painted my nails black for Halloween. She mentions it whenever she remembers. Please tell me you did it again. I will. Old news. Punks already did this in the 70s. It screams confidence. What do you guys think about painting your nails if you're, you know, a man? What is a movie you genuinely think should have a sequel? Not so much anymore because of Army Hammer, but always wanted to see a sequel to The Man from Uncle. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice! Bugs Life. Gremlins 3. Either them taking over Washington, the White House, or just make it a Halloween theme like the first one is Christmas themed. The Truman Show, The Batman, and Joker. Inception. It's my favorite Nolan film. Megamind. I thought we were getting a Megamind sequel, are we not? What's a little known movie that more people should watch? Maybe it's not entirely unknown, but People Under the Stairs is an underrated classic. Mouse Hunt. 1997. Rubber. It's about a tire that kills people. Gods must be crazy. It's hilarious. James and the Giant Peach. Kid-friendly, great family movie, beautifully animated, old, and original. They simply don't make them the same. Kung Fu Hustle. It's hilarious. I always recommend frequently asked questions about time travel. So good. What do you hate the most about humanity? That people who are constantly assholes or disrespectful just get away with it because that's who they are. But when little me breaks and has one disrespectful retort or nasty attitude, I get raked over the coals for it. We make everything so damn complicated for no legit reasons. I think there's actually not much of the humanity left now. <laughs> How long have you got? Ironically, hate itself. We're the only species on this planet that could end it. What did you have for breakfast? I think I skipped breakfast this morning. I can't, I don't remember. Usually I have an egg sandwich though with like turkey and pepper jack cheese and some whole wheat toast. I don't know. Coffee. I had a bowl of oatmeal with milk and sugar. I had toast with butter. Next time, try butter with toast. It's a game changer. Egg scramble with some bacon, tomatoes, spinach, and mushrooms. My wife is awesome. Homemade cinnamon rolls. Nothing. Air has entered the chat. Bold of you to assume that I wake up before 11.30 a.m. Breakfast is the first meal of the day, you know. The one that breaks your fast. Bold of you to assume that I fast at night. A bagel with cream cheese? In the form of a question? A croissant with a banana and some tea. What is a quote from a fictional character that has stuck with you ever since? If more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. Thor and Oakenshield from The Hobbit. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place. Johnny. The Room. Oh, hi, Mark. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. That is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. No amount of money bought a second of time. Tony Stark. They like the things science gives them, but not the questions science asks. From Frankenweenie. I think it stuck with me because I heard it at such a young age. It does not do well to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Dumbledore. Of course it's all in your head, but why on earth should that have to mean it isn't real? Dumbledore. I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. You never get a happy ending because there's always more show. Bojack Horseman. They laugh at me because I'm different. I laugh at them 
because they're all the same. Ain't no way this guy just quoted Joker. All right. I have a good one. Mine is from Silene from Pokemon Legends Arceus. It is how others choose to view you is a choice only they can make. You cannot make it for them. I think it's a really nice one and I have it saved because I think it's neat. What quote do you wish people would stop using? If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Any of the ones attributed to Albert Einstein. The customer is always right. Different variations of the phrase, yeah, I'm a fuller, but I'm the most loyal MF you'll ever meet. As if it's a virtue to be inconsiderate head to all but a select few people. Don't be nervous. That just makes me more nervous. Well, I'm a bit over Karen. No, so here's the thing. As long as Karen still exists, we're gonna keep calling them Karens until people start respecting retail workers and fast food workers and any underpaid worker like that. They're Karens. <laughs> I don't care if you're over it or not. I did a thing. Ah, oh, the millennial anthem. I love Dr. Seuss, but if I have to see Don't Cry Because It's Over, Smile Because It Happened one more time, I'm gonna lose it. No pain, no gain. As someone into fitness, I hate hearing this, even when it's just joking around in the gym. Pain is your body saying, please stop doing this before you end up injured. What is something everyone loves, but you hate? Long phone calls. Raymond. So you're his brother. Hookups and one night stands. I don't think anyone loves hookups and one night stands. I just think it's a, it's a need that people need fulfilled. Not all people, some people, and they'll seek it out. Maybe don't be so judgmental. Social media. Sometimes I feel like a weirdo. Am I the only one that loves privacy? Myself. That TV show Friends. Olives. Same. Olives are fucking disgusting. And they're right. Olives are gross. If you like olives, comment below and tell me that I'm wrong. Say, Mason, you're wrong. Olives are good. And I will dislike that comment. What looks fun in movies, but is not fun in real life? Fighting. Movie heroes always take punches and are unscathed in the next scene, except for minor bruising. IRL, they'd be incapacitated for a few days and maybe suffer a concussion. Constant misunderstandings. Prom. Being shot at by 50 guys. Getting a taxi. The price is enough to ruin your day. Tarzan surfing on trees. Imagine the splinters I'd get myself even though I'm keen to be dynamic like him. Snakes on a plane. Going to uni. Dating. In the movies, there's a meet cute followed by a montage of fun romantic dates. Real life. Awkwardness, uncertainty, insecurity, and dread. High school. What is the worst thing you've ever had to clean up? Cow died in a pond and I had to drag it out. It had been there a few days, so it was pretty ripe. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> That's fucking gross. Dog ran in from the garden, jumped on the bed, and vomited her breakfast plus a cat poo that she'd just eaten. Hard to describe how bad that smelled. Overflowing grease trap in a restaurant kitchen. Nasty. I used to clean public park restrooms in Texas in August. I quit to work in a sewer plant because it smelled better. Camp trash cans that had been camp trash cans that hadn't been cleaned in so long. Maggots were squirming all over them. My first job was detailing cars. We had a station wagon roll in that two large dogs had used as a doghouse, toilet, labor, and deliver room. It was a pretty solid nightmare fuel. Grease trap at a restaurant that hadn't been cleaned in two years. I vomited constantly from the smell to the point that my nose bled while wearing a respirator. Gun to your head. You can only eat one dish for the rest of your life. What is it? My answer is tomato soup. What do you guys think? Okay, hear me out. Potatoes. Uh, it might have to be a little more specific because the man with the gun to your head might just put raw potatoes in front of you. If I can only eat one thing, I'd eat the bullet. Eating is one of the, like five things that keep me going. Oh, tacos. Easy. Dat uh, uh, I don't think dat would be very nutritious. Sushi. Beat me to it. Salad, because they're extremely versatile and customizable, and you can add as much or as little of almost anything you want. Wait, the rest of my life? You're gonna shoot me once I've eaten, aren't you? Th there's no way you can hold a gun to my head for several years. I'll have a crispy deep-fried chili beef with special fry, please, since I'm gonna die anyway. Beef stew loaded with vegetables, carrots, celery, onion, green beans, potatoes, and mushrooms. You could eat them a la carte. Salmon, oven-roasted potatoes, broccoli, zucchini, peppers, sweet potatoes, and a side of avocado. What is the new American dream. To have enough money working one job to live comfortably. Current objective. Survive. Having enough money not to be stressed 24-7 about something breaking. To be able to own a home, retire before 70, and to be covered enough in a medical situation that you don't end up homeless after a routine operation. To get hit by a post truck or other government vehicle and get just injured enough to sue, but not too injured as to not be able to enjoy your payout. A less shitty America. To not have roommates. Paying rent and having enough left over for a meal. Same as it always been, get super rich doing very little work. That's why influencer is a dream job and people invest in crazy things like crypto and NFTs. People want to hit home runs and they don't want to grind for a decent living. It's just harder to achieve now. If you can get one more season from your favorite TV show, which one would it be? Mindhunter. This is the right answer. Pushing daisies. My name is Earl. Game of Thrones. I don't want a ninth season though. I want them to have a second try at season eight. Hannibal. Community. Hey, you got a movie. Futurama. Good news, everyone. How I Met Your Mother. They need to make the last two episodes a whole season so they don't give the audience whiplash 
when they threw out everything they had previously built up. More time with Ted and his wife, and with Robin and Barney before the divorce and the death, and then have the last episode the same by the end of season 10. What's better when it's smaller? Kidney stone. Debt. Bouts of diarrhea. Tumors. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Inflation. Time spent on Reddit. Problems. <laughs> A shart. Those tiny M&Ms you get for Halloween. Oh, that's so true. The tiny M&Ms taste so much better than the regular M&Ms. If you were 22 again, what would you do differently? Go back to college sooner. Divorce much earlier. Get a good therapist and date people who have great follow through rather than lots of potential. I went backpacking through Europe when I was 20. It was what really pushed me out of my comfort zone, but also gave me a whole new perspective of how America didn't really have the monopoly on freedom. But if I was 22, I would have just graduated college and gone back to Europe and stayed there. Instead, I just worked on a couple different careers and became a hobby farmer, which I enjoy, but now really prevents me from expatriating unless I make a lot of sacrifices. Break up with my high school boyfriend and enter a different industry. Start lifting weights. Not too much. Tweak a few decisions I had made. Hey, fair enough. Stop using credit cards to buy things that I couldn't afford. What is a simple thing that makes you happy? Mine would be getting home from work and being greeted at the door by my cat. All the cat subreddits. Being told, I'm proud of you. Ice black coffee in the morning sun. Outliving an enemy. It's one of the few satisfactions of old age. Some people love to live off spite and that's okay. Hanging out with friends. Nature. A compliment means I'm doing something right. McDonald's chicken nuggets. Flowers in a nice cup of tea. If you could delete anything in this world, what would it be? War. Hate. Violence and judgment. Anyone who says people. People. Ah, he got you. He got you. My third nipple. Meg. Megatron. Religion. Your account. Thank you, Sigma Not the Press, with the Roblox Weezer profile picture. <laughs> the internet. Let's see how broad the human knowledge is when we remove it in their lives. Because I'm sure a lot of people pretend to be smart by just looking up on the internet. Because I believe that true knowledge is shown by real life practice, not search. Copy paste. Wow, this guy's really fucking annoying. <laughs> this guy's annoying. You're you're a nerd. You're fucking dweeb. Get a job. You're dating your username. How good do you have it? No, I don't want to be a furry. Tired of hearing about how much they bench press. Probably pretty bad. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm dating a vehicle. It's pretty queer, all right. Oh yeah. I'm in heaven. If life was a video game, then what could be some achievements? Bring joy. Make someone else smile. Achievement unlocked. Slippery slope. <laughs> yourself in public after trying to let out a silent fart. I'll start. My middle name is Danger and my first name is Dummy. <laughs> Put yourself into a near-death experience on purpose and survive. What the hell are you smoking? Yes. Emotional insight. Awareness and capacity to process emotions in a healthy manner. Achievement unlocked. You went 30 days without offending someone. Trophy. You live a boring life. Okay. <laughs> Class clown. Make a joke everyone will remember. For the depressed, you've brushed your teeth. Tax god. Do your taxes without making a mistake or paying anyone to do it for you. What's a fact that some people just can't accept? Science doesn't care what you believe. That life isn't supposed to be fair and that equality of opportunity and equality of outcome are not the same. Facts aren't opinions. Not everyone that disagrees with them is an evil person trying to push some malevolent agenda. You can do the best, not make mistakes, and still lose. Life isn't fair. You can and will be wrong. Being part of the alphabet mafia doesn't actually make you a better person. You can be gay, trans, bi, whatever, and be a piece of... I'm gay and agree. You've been gay certified. The term alphabet mafia is conspiratorial and derogatory. It seems a little cucked to agree with him, TBH, but I like your positivity. Yeah, some doesn't, <laughs> some doesn't feel right here. That we are the same humans as Sumerians, Romans, and all the people who were alive thousand years ago. It doesn't matter if it's 2022 or 7,000 BC. That their choices have more impact on their life than they are willing to admit. People who ride ridiculously loud motorcycles on purpose, why? I'm far more interested in hearing from people who accidentally ride ridiculously loud motorcycles motorcycles. Their story should be a doozy. There's a South Park episode that addresses this question. I know which one you're talking about. I wish I knew, so I'd maybe have a reason to be empathetic to my neighbor that wakes my kids up at least four times a week revving his super cool bike to take off at 20 miles per hour on a quiet residential street. Motorcycles are a bit like alcohol. It's fun to be drunk. It's not fun to be sober around drunks. Look at me! Look at me! I'm important! I was into loud car audio, and I was in an immature asshole. I wish I could apologize. Loud motorcycle guy is like a toddler that walks around banging pants together. What is a minor inconvenience that instantly pisses you off? When I go to a web page, but it doesn't load all at once, so when you go to click something, the page shifts as other things load in, and you end up clicking the wrong thing. When this happens, I can feel my body physically reeling from the anger and stress. People standing in doorways, especially people standing in groups having conversations in doorways. Get the hell out of the way already. People's lack of awareness of others really astounds me. When you bite your tongue or cheek while eating, and then suddenly that one particular spot becomes like a magnet, attracting your teeth to it, and you keep biting it. When a ballpoint pen doesn't work when it clearly has ink in it, it is 
one job when the people walking in front of me are really slow, but also spread out so you can't walk past them. Ads that try to hide the X button by putting something white where the button is. Forgot password? Ah, enters new password. New password can't be the same as the old password. Ads in the middle of videos. Ads that block the paragraph I just started reading. Ads that are made to look like normal content. Ads. The incorrect autocorrect. When the cord for my headphones catches on something and they're yanked for my ears. Just get Bluetooth headphones. Silly. Silly Billy. Struggling to get clothes off for whatever reason. Makes me panic and see red. Sports bra plus sweaty body equals panic. And having an itch on the bottom of your foot but wearing shoes? That's brutal. Especially while driving. You become emperor of the world and everybody has to obey you. What do you do first? Tell everyone to chill the f*** out. Execute order 66, of course. Put somebody else in charge and take a week off. In Australia, we call that the Scott Morrison approach. Not without a trip to Hawaii while the country is burning. The ScoMo No Show. I just realized if I had this power, most people wouldn't remember me as a nice person. First act. No matter what I do, you must remember me as a nice person. Hey, that solves a lot of problems there. Get Google to teach the maps lady how to pronounce Welsh locations. I did the Australian accent on my GPS and hearing her pronounce the names of places where I live that are indigenous American in origin is interesting. Play the world's largest game of Simon Says. Losers get dragged to hell, but if you win, you get a medal. A medal? Count me in! Build a huge mansion on a private island. Then I would get to the boring stuff like world beasts. Personal peace is very important to take wise decisions. Every item of clothing must have at least two pockets. I'm emperor of the world. I shout if I want. Two pockets on each sock will be weird. Pyramids. That's definitely top prio for every great ruler. Pyramid schemes or pyramid to keep your dead body? Eh, probably both. Bro, think of the pyramid we could build today. You know how we can look back and wonder how the pyramids were built with the tech and power available then? What can we build today that would baffle future observers? What's the most gatekeepy opinion that you hold? A lot of people in the comments don't know what gatekeep means. Stop gatekeeping gatekeeping. Stop gatekeeping people from gatekeeping gatekeeping. For travelers, if you didn't leave the airport and spend at least one day in the country, you didn't visit the place. I'm not telling you. Three wheelers and slingshots are not motorcycles. Don't talk about how great your country is if you haven't spent some time abroad. My country is the greatest in the world. Guy who's never left his zip code. Cruises and all-inclusive hotels do not count. If you want to design tabletop RPGs, you need to play more than just D&D. The gate at my workplace is for deliveries only. You're not a foodie if you only like to eat five things and pick half the stuff in every dish before you eat it. Also, you need to cook or else you really don't understand food and all the processes that can go into making something. If you can't even cook basic stuff and haven't bothered to try much of anything, your food opinions don't matter. It's so petty and I hate myself for it, but when someone sits down at the piano and pounds out either chopsticks or fur elise, my soul dies. Yeah, that's why you gotta play Undertale music, like like the Sands Battle or, or the Ronbu music, the whatever it's called, F Falling Down, Falling Down. Those ones, you'll get a hit with gamers and non-gamers alike. You shouldn't wear band t-shirts if you don't know the band. The original gatekeeping. What is wrong with society today? Social media. They're taking the bait and embrace the infighting rather than making meaningful change by collectively directing their anger at people who've been f***ing them for years with no Vaseline. Poor public education. We are too focused on what everybody else is doing instead of caring for our natural world. Unwillingness to listen. Yeah, this. Also an unwillingness to listen. Lack of kindness. Encouragement of cruelty, whether severe or it was just a prank, bro. Laughs maniacally while swinging fists. It's just a prank, bro. Just a prank. Why you mad, bro? Jeez, <laughs> lighten up. I hate this kind of thinking. Pranks are supposed to be lighthearted, not detrimental to someone's health. We are more concerned about Instagram likes than actual problems. This feels like a shallow dig. People just don't feel empowered to face the actual problems because the system in place obfuscate it. Bad public education leading to people being more susceptible to bullshit and propaganda on the internet and TV. I 100% agree. People not developing the ability to critically think and form a rational and logical idea on an issue or topic is a serious problem. Makes it so easy to manipulate and abuse. People aren't wearing enough hats for sun protection or just style. McDonald's doesn't serve breakfast all day. In Canada, they do. That moment when people started lifting up their phones to film tragedy instead of stepping in to help. Whatever caused that, that's what's wrong. Lack of love. What's a small act of kindness that literally anyone can do and practice every day? Be aware of your surroundings and don't block entrances, exits, hallways, etc. Not act on road rage. Just let the moment pass. Patience. You never know what someone else is going through. Could be a breakup, their dog just died, granny finally made it to heaven, or maybe mom just broke the news that she's got end-stage cervical cancer and has weeks left to live. You never know, so be patient. After all, wouldn't you want someone to be patient with you? I really enjoy letting people with less items go ahead of me at checkout in the grocery store. The look on their face when I signal for them to get in front of me makes it worth waiting a little longer. Hold doors open for people. I've always done it. Ask people how they are, then pay attention and listen. Their life is important as yours, and you might just learn something. Assume anyone you've had a bad interaction with is a good person who's just having a bad day. Be nice to retail and customer service employees. Just let each other merge in traffic and stop trying to race to the front of the line. It's not that
that hard. You can actually cause a 20 minute backup by causing one person to break hard and disrupt the flow. What food is total garbage if you reheat it in the microwave? Anything with red sauce in it, for sure. Fries. They need that dry heat of an air fryer. Soggy microwave fries are the worst. They taste like sadness. Anything with lettuce. I always want to get it on my sandwich, but sucks in the fridge. Ugh, the nasty hot lettuce is the worst. To school bullies, why did you do it and do you regret it? Man, I hope this blows up. I need answers. And me too, buddy. Just ask my oldest, 19M. He was a horrible bully, especially his little brother. I did everything I could think of to correct this behavior, but his father's endlessly encouraging of it. He said he said because I was super jealous, dude. They got to be weird, but I couldn't because dad would hate me. He has embraced his weird, thank God. Unfortunately, he does admit that he doesn't really regret it. I faced a lot of abuse. It doesn't make what I did right, but I regret it every single day. I wish I could track down the people I bullied and apologize. I try to all the time, but I can't find them. I didn't realize I was. I thought by asking questions I was showing interest, not shaming. I thought by sharing similar stories I was relating, but not one-upping. That was the only language I was taught to speak. I did not come to understand what it meant to others until I was much older. I was bullied, so I bullied others. Me being bullied made me feel bad, so to prop myself up, I bullied weaker ones. I didn't need to be the strongest person in school, but I also didn't want to be the weakest. Is the right train of thought? Nope, but I was 13. I was a bully short term. After my parents got divorced when I was nine, I just didn't understand my feelings. I started acting out, looking for a place to fit in. I got to hanging around the rougher kids and just started bullying this one kid for no reason for years until we moved away. I went quickly from bullying to being bullied. I went from fighting because I wanted to to fighting because I had to. I got tired of it real quick. It managed to calm my ass down and after my stepdad, he was an abusive drunk, finally went to prison. It was as if all the violence in me went with him. My grades improved. I had a really good girlfriend almost all the way through high school. Attendance was up, worked on an after school job and went to church every Wednesday and twice on Sunday. I mostly blame my stepdad for behavior as they say, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, I absolutely regret it. I used to bully the bullies. Aside from them, I was a friendly person and got along with like 90% of my year level. I don't regret having cracks at these guys, but there are individual incidents that I regret when I took it too far. I wanted to make everyone else feel as powerless and frustrated and angry as I was. Oh my god, that was so negative. Holy moly. What is your best insult? I'm jealous of people who don't know you. You're so hard to underestimate. Call anyone. <laughs> Call anyone forehead and watch them break. I love how we went from regretting bullying stories to being heads to people. That's so mean. I'm not as stupid as you look. I'm a fan of, I've been called worse things by better people. All those nasty insecurities you have about yourself are true. If you had an intelligent thought in your head, it died a loneliness. The only way a woman would interact with you is with a taser. I'm sorry, who are you? I lack the appropriate color crayons to explain this to you. The best part of you ran down the crack of your mother's Women have read it. What are things men do that make them ghostable? I'm taking notes, ladies. I met a guy at a bar once. He seemed like a nice guy and we exchanged numbers. The following week, he asked me out. I told him I couldn't that night, but I was free tomorrow. Why? He asked. I told him I had a funeral tomorrow morning and just didn't feel like going out. What time is the funeral? He said. I won't stay too long. Please, I really want to see you. He wouldn't take no for an answer and to me, that is a huge red flag. I ghosted him after that. Send unsolicited nudes and still have the audacity to ask if I want some of it. Not respecting boundaries. Instant no. So picking you up on Tuesday? Someone that doesn't try to maintain a conversation with you. Like you're basically talking to yourself. When they die and start floating around the house moaning spookily, rattling chains, and opening and closing doors. Two girls with a cool hippie van and talking dog would absolutely disagree. Creepy messages or creepy in-person behavior like coming on too strong. I'd rather block you than risk my safety or be accused of leading you on. Sending a message, then two minutes later sending question marks, then a couple more minutes later sending hello? Bye bitch lol? Which cartoon character becomes more relatable the older you get? The obvious one Squidward, Tom from Tom and Jerry. Stew Pickles making pudding at 4 a.m. You've lost control of your life. Homer Simpson, I have three kids and no money. Why can't I have no kids and three money? Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. F off, uninvited guests. You tell him, Rabbit. That dude from the B movie. I'd be upset too if some girl ditches me for a B. The Grinch. Megatron. Shut up, Meg. Garfield. I feel like people are, are uh, conditioned to hate Mondays at an early age now. Donald Duck. Always pissed off? I get it now. All those women who smack Johnny Bravo with their purse. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it crazy how like an entire show about harassing women is just like a like a staple in, a, in American older Americans crazy Charlie Brown hell I was fully identifying with him when I was nine and the strip was still current what gives you faith in humanity just day-to-day -day life and interaction based on my experience I honestly believe that most people are just people who are generally good natured towards others and have some form of human decency don't get me wrong there are some truly shitty things going on but there's also kindness too that good ideas never die once humanity gets a hold of an idea like all men are created equal, it will never go away. Didn't make everyone equal overnight. We're still working on that. Thus, we progress little by little. As fallen angels, we suck, but
but as rising apes, we're kind of killing it. R slash made me smile. There are still good people in this world, making others happy with acts of kindness, big or small. The man who helped me put on my spare tire. Everyone else honked at me and passed me, but not this guy. He even went back to his apartment to get his jack and then helped me. Thanks, Philip. I still meet good people and see good deeds done on a daily basis. Small children who haven't yet been corrupted by the shit of the world being happy and carefree. Men who are curious about breasts. What questions do you want answered? Were backpacks ever useful like counterweights? I know it's so stupid, but freshman me had this question going on. Only if by counterweight you mean even more crushing weight on your shoulders? What effects does a period have on them? It makes them sore. Does it hurt if I hug back tightly when a woman hug me? It can do. Depends on the individual, of course, but there are differing levels of sensitivity and hormones. Can make them uncomfortable, icky, painful without tight hugs. Do women also have random nipple erections in public? Oh yes, another reason padded bras exist. Why don't we have padded underwear for public boners? Does it get uncomfortable when you sleep on your stomach? Sometimes you can get a pillow just right so it's comfy. 99% of the time, either a nip gets mad, it's getting squished, or the lower back starts aching due to the angle. Boner here. Please tell us if you feel something that feels off. Women can get breast cancer as early as their 20s and an extra pair of hands will be helpful. Signed, a breast cancer fighter whose ex told her that he felt something but didn't tell her because he didn't want to freak me out. When you are breastfeeding and have to pump, does it feel like a full bladder having to pee but in your breast or does it just fill up and you pump whenever? Also, do y'all do weird things to them when you're bored? <laughs> the fucking double whammy. Holy moly. For me, it wasn't like I needed to pee. First, there would be some leaking and then it would feel almost like pressure and then they would get hard and painful. If I didn't pump every two hours, they would become hard like concrete, to the point my skin would start looking shiny because the skin was stretching, but not like peeing in the least bit. More like a pressure or muscle cramp. Do you store anything in between them? <laughs> Look, mate, women's clothes rarely have decent pockets, and sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, I learned a lot today. <laughs> this is so fun. What's worse than stepping on a Lego? The only thing in existence that hurts more than stepping on a Lego is getting hit in the ankle with the side of a scooter. My little sister is a monster and bangs her stainless steel scooter into my feet on purpose because she thinks me wailing in pain is funny. I want to throw out that scooter so bad, but my parents will probably buy her another one. Throw the sister out instead. Yeah, that sounds like the easiest solution. Accidentally biting a chunk off the inside of your cheek whilst eating. I would have had more of a problem with this, but you really do just chomp a big old chunk of cheek out of your mouth. <laughs> Stepping on a landmine. Alright, looks like we have a wise guy here. When you have socks on, go into your kitchen area and step into wet. God, our freezer just like drops ice everywhere, so it happens more than you would like. Lego stepping on you. Oh, -ho, how the turntables. What is a word that sounds inappropriate? I'm a little scared to answer these. Ball It's a type of valve. Also, stop and silk He <laughs> They said Uvula. Dangly bit in your throat. Oh, so it's a girl house. I've seen a gas station called Munch and Pump, and while those two words separately are fine, together they are very uncomfortable. Manhole. I don't see what's so wrong about that. Masticate. Especially at the dinner table. Those muckbangers masticate all over the place. What does masticate mean? Don't, don't leave me out of the joke. Dongle. How low does your dongle dangle? What goes best with milk? For me, lactate. Alternatively, pairs well with a night on the towel. Cereal. A cereal killer. Oreo cereal. Babies. I prefer babies with gravy, but keep the barbecue sauce around for the ribs. Turns out, not my dad. He still can't find it. Oh, he found it all right. What are you talking about? Six foot stogie. What are you talking about? Pepsi. My grandpa's friend Laverne and Shirley made this famous. God, not pilk. Stop talking about pilk, please. What's the most ridiculous far-fetched conspiracy you've ever heard? That Eminem died like a decade ago and his body double has been posing as him so they can still release new music to make money. What kills me about all these the original artist is dead conspiracies is they assume that an equally talented, very similar looking person is just available to take over. And if that's the case, should we really care? I feel like it's something to be concerned about if a person died and we just replace them. The sky is a shield made by the government, I don't know which one specifically, so that we can't see God. Or what if God did it so he didn't have to look at us? Australia is fake and Aussies are all actors. Well, this is true. I can confirm I'm technically employed by these Australians, but I've never seen it on a map, so kind of weird. Hallmark cards invent celebration days to sell more greeting cards. You're trying to tell me that Hallmark invented Flag Day? Why would they do that? That Ask Reddit is a place where normal people ask questions and it's not just the FBI asking people things for collecting data. I thought it was that Ask Reddit
it was just BuzzFeed writers desperate for list ideas. Yeah, and stupid ass quizzes, man. No, no, no. Ask Reddit is actually specifically designed for this YouTube channel and this YouTube channel only. What's a good name for a pet T-Rex? Dave. Agreed. I love animals that are just given regular names, normal names, like, oh, hey, Steve. And it's just a poodle. Terry. Terry the T-Rex? Yeah, that's simple and easy. Rex. All right, that that's kind of in the non-imaginative zone. Gotta get that up. Gotta work on that. Tiny. Tiny the T-Rex, that works too. Nom Nom. All right, that is cute and fun, but how are you gonna call him out? Hey, Nom Nom, come on over here. All right, I guess it works. Who's an actor or actress that played a role too well? Anthony Hopkins, Hannibal Lecter. For him to be still referenced as the best Hannibal Lecter, it's insane. Like, clearly he sold it. Rosamund Pike in Gone Girl. Oh yeah, just pure evil, but you do kind of start rooting for her. Robin Williams, The Birdcage. Robin Williams in 20 Hour Photo. The f the only thing I know about 24-hour photo is that Robin is like a maniac, but he does also advertise Neon Genesis Evangelion, so I'm in for it. Heath Ledger's Joker. Guy literally went insane. Joaquin Phoenix as well. Very different sides of the spectrum for playing the character, but both are so good. Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. That woman was a force of nature in the movie. That's all. Imelda Staunton as Dolores Umbridge. Oh my god, yeah, way too good. Like, it's burned into my brain how much I did not like her. What were your parents right about? Naps are a privilege. You see, I just can't take naps. I Like, it just throws me off. When I was 17, I was a f***y young chap. Thought I was such an adult. My dad literally told me once after mouthing off to him, you don't know s*** about life or the real world. And he was correct. Once again, I'd like to give a solemn apology for that awful accent. I just saw chap and I thought I should do it. The older I get, I realize they were right about just about everything. You can't trust everyone. You can trust me. Just send me your credit card info and I'll prove it. Bees don't attack if I don't get scared. I'm not sure about that one. I don't trust them. What is the dumbest way you got a scar? For me, it was my brother uh, chomping his tooth into my forehead. I won't go into it. Slice the web of my thumb to the bone, cutting a block of cheese. New knife. Free sauce. Ew. Gross. I spilled soup in my lap and got second degree burns. Still have them a decade later. Oh, that's gotta be so rough. I, male 65, caught my upper arm on barbed wire sneaking into the county fair when I was around 16. I still have a two-inch scar. The worst part was that we got caught by a cop on horseback within five minutes and kicked out. I have two. One, don't cut towards yourself. Two, kitty bath time. Took a razor blade and slid it against my finger to see if it was truly sharp. Had to hide in the bathroom so no one would punish me for being that stupid. It was indeed sharp. Superman right off the couch into the coffee table when I was five. I still have the scar on my forehead 35 years later. Oh, God, for it to be that bad? I'm so sorry. What's the worst place to be stuck in for 12 hours? Uh, if you work in a fast food restaurant, you know the answer. A septic tank on a 100 degree day. Being in one in general doesn't sound fun. Traffic. Oh, my Lord. What a hell you must live in if you have 12 hour traffic. Dangling over the Grand Canyon. Yeah, that would probably suck for 12 hours. The fucking airport. In the plane. On the runway. Yeah, I think that's the worst, having to sit in these tiny cramped little seats for that long? Unreasonable. Hanging upside down on a roller coaster. Yeah, you would be dead. That happens all the time. What is your go-to song in karaoke? I don't do karaoke too often, but probably All-Star. It's easy. Mr. Brightside is a lot of fun. Roses by Outkast. Ooh, yeah, that'll really funk up the karaoke place. Guns and Roses, Welcome to the Jungle. Now that'll hit with all of the dads. Careless Whisper by George Michael. All right, if you're trying to seduce someone, that will work. Don't Stop Believin' by Journey. You know, I hate it, because every time I think of that song, I think of Adam Sandler now. What movie has the best opening scene? Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, for immersing a viewer into the movie, that one just jumps you right into it. The Fellowship of the Ring. I'm having trouble remembering, so I know Robin's gonna kill me later. The Dark Knight. What was the opening to The Dark Knight? I'm not smart. <laughs> Cars. Yeah, Cars did do a pretty good job of introducing you to this world of talking cars. Pulp Fiction. But you don't really get it until the last scene. Ah, sh**. I shot Marvin in the face. Hey, that's not the quote from the beginning. You're lying. Which lyrics are stuck in your head forever? My money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I want to see you wiggle wiggle for sure, etc. TikTok really makes anything a sound now, huh? I get knocked down, but I get up again. You never gotta keep me down. Ugh. Tub Thumping by 
by Chumbawamba? Come on! Haven't you people ever heard of closing a goddamn door? No. It's much better to face this kinds of things with a sense of poise and rationality. Who sings that? I I don't I don't know. We don't talk about Bruno. Ugh, love Frozen 2. You didn't have to cut me off like that heaven cousin. I don't even need your love. Yeah, that guy really just went full gibberish in that line, huh? What line from The Simpsons never fails to make you laugh? Me fail English? That's impossible. Ralph Wiggum. Ugh, what an adorable little idiot. That is also the conclusion of my Simpsons impressions. You'll have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. No clue who says that, honestly. It's like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I have three kids and no money. Why can't I have no kids and three money? What is something you need to get off your chest? I have two regrets in life. I've told no one, and I won't even tell unknown strangers on Reddit. But thanks for asking. Okay. I mean, fair enough. My bra. Too true. I should probably be wearing a bra. Oh god, did I just say that out loud? In primary school, we did a bake sale, and they said make things from scratch, but then I got a pre-made mix and made them, and I told no one. I mean, well, what are you, what else are you supposed to do in primary school? Like, what? They expect you to know how to bake? I don't like cats. I want to give her away, but my family won't let me. Well, if it's the family cat, then yeah, you're not allowed to give it away. One time, I farted in the car with my parents, and it smelled really bad, and I said it wasn't me, and they thought someone's septic tank was having serious problems. Well, hey, at least you got away with it. Until this moment when they see the video. What's one dish from Disney slash Nickelodeon slash any cartoon show you've always wanted to try? A Krusty Krab pizza, because it's the pizza for you and me. A damn Krabby Patty. Honestly, yeah, but you did spell it wrong. It's spelled with a K. So, no Krabby Patty for you then. The family meal from Coraline before it all went to sh**. Yeah, that food did look really nice. I mean, it does suck that you have to put stuff in your face before you can eat it, but it is still nice. The beignets that Tiana makes in Princess and the Frog. I haven't seen Princess and the Frog in a long time, so I don't remember what they look like. They do sound really yummy. Basically anything shown in a Studio Ghibli movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, this person, they have the answer. This is the answer. What concerns you the most about teenagers today? That they're all really mean to me. I'm really getting sick of it. I pay taxes. Repeats all the talking points people said about millennials. Repeats all the talking points people said about Gen Xers. Doing something stupid to be internet famous. Stupid and funny, but still stupid AF. Being stupid online is kind of like the bridge between all generations, I think. Everybody can be stupid and maybe get famous. Their parents. Is that because their parents didn't do a good job at disciplining, or what? what's the point? How hard their lives are. I can't tell if this is like a dig because all oh, teenagers have it easy or whatever because honestly right now it's pretty rough I'd say. Nothing. Let them be kids already. Yeah, for real. We gotta start leaving teenagers alone unless they are super disrespectful and like entitled then yeah you can like bully them or something. I don't know. You're on a six hour flight and at a window seat when a person arrives at your row to sit next to you. What sort of person are you hoping to see? Quiet, clean, slash orderly, tidy. Thought that said titty. Titty is a plus though. All right, you nasty boys, knock it off. Hopefully, no one, and it's an empty seat. This is the correct answer. Yeah, honestly, it is a luxury to have nobody sit in your row with you because you can lay out on the seats, but God, is it rare? It sounds like a lot of people here really don't want to talk to strangers on a six-hour flight. I don't want to talk to strangers most of the time, not just on a six-hour flight. It sounds like you might be a loud, chatty person. Someone who doesn't use Axe deodorant, especially musk or chocolate fragrance. God, the chocolate one was like the nastiest to me, like blech. Anybody but the pilot. Oh yeah, that would be kind of awful if the pilot just wandered on back and sat next to you. What's currently stopping you from being rich? Oh, I, I eat too much avocado toast and I drink the Starbucks. Is that what you want me to say? Is that what you think I, I'm gonna say? Not having a lot of money. Yeah, I guess that's a good enough reason why you're not rich yet. Splurging money brings me temporary happiness. This is a fair answer. This, I mean, that's <laughs> kind of 
what mine is. Too much avocado toast. See, there it is. I knew it. Uh -huh. I need to buy an iced coffee every time I leave my house. Uh-huh, 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 I'm sure. I'm dumb and my parents aren't rich. That is kind of a bad spawn point, huh? There are two kinds of people. What are they? Those who shoot monsters and those who shoots little Tiffany holding quantum physics textbooks late at night. Yeah, why is she running around learning quantum physics if she's only in like sixth grade, huh? It's men in black if you didn't get it. <laughs> those who can extrapolate from incomplete data and those who finish sentences. People who think there's only two kinds of people and people who know that's nonsense. Those who breathe and those who don't. This feels like the penultimate answer. I mean, there's alive and then there's dead and meh. Those who complete lists and penguins. Thanks, cheese fondue. What terrible movie had an amazing concept? Has everybody forgotten about that one movie Netflix released on their platform that starts with the letter C? Any more hints? Total letters, six. I mean, I, um, hmm. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's not a terrible movie. I wouldn't say terrible, but I love the idea more than the way they executed it. Felt all over the place, but I guess that was the point? This person is just wrong. That movie is amazing in so many ways. Sorry, I won't talk about it more, but they're wrong. In Time. Yeah, this is a good answer. In Time always seemed so interesting, but like the pacing was wrong and just meh. Overall. The Crimes of Grindelwald and the Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah, these movies have just gotten so forgettable that I didn't even bother seeing Secrets of Dumbledore. D spoiler alert, the secret is that he's gay, <laughs> but not in China. <laughs> the Mask. An ancient cursed artifact that when worn transforms you into an incarnate of your most repressed impulses and desires. I think the first mask is pretty solid. I don't know why they bothered trying to force a sequel out of it, but I, I don't know. Hollywood's weird, I guess. People who've met celebrities. What were they like? Spike Lee has pushed me on three different occasions. That's hilarious. Okay, but why and how? Post Malone was just chilling in the lobby of my local movie theater. Midwest. He had a show the next day. Pretty chill dude. Took a selfie, said I like your stuff, man. I'll see you tomorrow. He thanked me graciously and was a bro about it. 20 second interaction and he wasn't a douche or mad like other famous people are. Didn't see himself as above anyone. He blended in very well on his own. Post Malone was a Minecraft kid, so you never know. Ryan Gosling was very friendly and down to earth. However, this was back in 2001. What, do you have evidence that Ryan Gosling is a mean guy? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, fame gets to people, but come on. I told Dan Mariano that I loved him in Ace Ventura. He was not amused. Wendy Williams was nice, I guess. Yes. So jealous. I love her, honestly. The hubby hates her, though. <laughs> I think most men do. She was nice, though. He doesn't like how she takes pauses and sucks in air through her teeth. He hates the sound it makes. I do not like Wendy Williams, but you cannot deny that the things that she says and pumps out into the world are hilarious. Just by pure, like, unawareness. What is something that you genuinely hate? People who keep talking over me while I'm talking to them. It stresses me out a lot. People who chew slash breathe loudly or weirdly and people that don't understand personal space. The we don't talk about Bruno song. Yeah, that's the issue with a lot of music marketed in movies is that it's just too much. They don't know when to stop. Acapella music. I guess I, you're allowed to say that, but have you ever seen Pitch Perfect? That's what I thought. Mint in chocolate. I will fight you. Okay, he didn't say mint chocolate chip ice cream, so I think we're safe. Who is your favorite movie villain and why? Heath Ledger's Joker. The way he takes over any scene he's in is breathtaking. Megamind. Do I even need to explain? Hola. <laughs> Harry Potter. He's so convincing. Wait a minute. Gru from Despicable Me. Yay. <laughs> Mother Gothel. Because she is absolutely hot as sh**. Alright, the horny boys need to go home. What was the worst part about high school? High school. More specifically, high school. Yes, I hated high High school. Yes, all the things high school. All of it. Don't forget about high school. That was the worst part. Getting called on to turn the light off with a boner. Whoa, okay, left field on that one. <laughs> the part that was high school. All right, everybody, you're gonna have to get those creative juices flowing. Find a different answer. I don't remember anything that didn't suck. It's not a musical. Oh yeah, Disney just lied. I thought we were gonna be having fun and instead I was crying. <laughs> What's something that you firmly believe that Reddit will hate you for? Using emojis. We're in this together. Do you guys use emojis? Because you didn't use them there, so you're not super strong on that point. Great question.
question. I'm not gonna answer because I don't want to be banned. Whoa, what does that mean? <laughs> Fun Royale, what does that mean? Those ladies on The View are fucking idiots. That's the most non-controversial, factual, accurate post in this thread. Yeah, I don't know why they felt like they, I, if you're in The View subreddit, then sure, obviously. I put the milk before the cereal. I feel like that's a universal thing that is just wrong and you will be found. Pineapple on pizza is a gift from the gods. I agree with them. Fight me. I don't care. <laughs> nice try, Reddit. Oh yeah, this is just Reddit trying to find people to hate. What are some very comforting facts? Cows have best friends. This is moving to know. Thank you. <laughs> if you make it to the airport without dying, you've already passed the deadliest part of plane travel. Airplane safety presentations have left the chat. <laughs> it is illegal to own less than two guinea pigs in Switzerland due to them being social animals. Discarding this rule would be considered abuse. When a cat purrs on you, they're basically healing you. How so? Like, is this like a, like a magic thing or just, okay. Most people don't think about you. Comforting, you say? I can kind of see what they're meaning. It's like people aren't thinking about you. So like, you don't need to be like self-conscious because nobody's really thinking about it like that. Like you, hopefully you get it. If you could revive one person from the dead, who would it be? Well, for how long? That's like a more important question. Harambe. Yeah, I know all of you are giggling that that's a good answer. It, it, it was a gorilla in a zoo. Sorry. Technoblade. R.I.P. Techno. Yeah, I didn't personally know him or watch his content, but definitely gone way too soon. Kurt Cobain. So we could find out what actually happened. And that is actually kind of an interesting answer. One I really haven't heard before. Bob Ross. The world needs him. And we really needed him during the pandemic. Betty White. Oh, God, this uh, this one was just to make me feel bad about all the people that died recently. Come on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what is the dumbest idea you have ever had that actually worked? Wearing a motorcycle helmet while snow blowing. I did it because I missed riding. It kept my face warm, and when snow would fly back at me, the visor would protect me. When I was younger, I got called into HR because I drew a very detailed picture of a penis. <laughs> it was really, really good. The HR meeting happened like a week after I drew it, and my only defense was, I don't recall doing that. Do you happen to have the picture? It might jog my memory. They didn't have it, of course, because I had it. And because I didn't confess, they couldn't do <laughs> Investigation results inconclusive. Have a nice day. A storm broke a limb on a tree hanging over my house in my backyard, but it was still hanging on by a few splinters. I didn't want it to fall, and it wasn't in a place where I could use my ladder to get it. So I found a rope, tied a brick to it, threw the brick and rope over the limb, made a crude rope swing, and swung and pulled the branch until it finished breaking. It wasn't until I was using the chainsaw to cut it up that I realized how many times during my stupid idea I could have easily hurt or even killed myself. A friend and I once snuck 15 people into a warp war by giving them bracelets from a party supply store and clipboards full of paper. Walked up to the side gate and said we were with the Rock the Vote. The security guard waved us right in. I forgot to bring a resume to a job interview, but I had an index card in my bag. I cut the index card in half and wrote my name, my contact info, and creative problem solver in my best handwriting and gave a copy of my business card to both the interviewers. I got the job. When I was young and broke, I bought a sofa from a used furniture store. I had no way to take the sofa home. I went to a used car lot a couple of blocks away and took a truck for a test drive. That's genius. That's actually genius. Not my idea, but my mom's. I dropped one of my earrings and couldn't find it, so she threw my other earring on the floor and it happened to land right next to the first one. Put Jesus in as a Wi-Fi password in church. It worked. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ask MK. My name is Mason. We got some posts to get through, so let's get going. Without saying what the category is, what are your top five? Youth of today, quicksand, rival schools, gorilla biscuits, war zone. I could not tell you what that means. <laughs> Katana, trespass, wizard, firebird, Vulcan. Again, nothing. I got nothing. Chicken wings, mozzarella sticks, hamburgers, french fries, chicken tenders, yoga pants, 10 out of 10 with rice, H, Q, G, Nicolas Cage, and Leroy Jenkins. Fresh asphalt, mint, nail polish remover, my own farts, and meat on the grill. That one's got to be best smells. Lavernica, the Kensi, Brutalitops, Mar, Bing Bong, Kansas City, Denver, Chicago, Oklahoma, Wichita. How would you feel if underwear had butt cheek sizes? A, B, C, double D, etc. Just like bra cup sizes, but for your butt. I would compare cheek sizes with my homies. I'm fine with it, as long as there's a Hank Hill equivalent size. Small butts matter too. Then I'd be able to buy pants that fit. Mine would be a size W. The W standing for wagon. I would think I would end up feeling insecure about the size of my butt, because I would know how it falls on a scale, and like right now, I can pretend like it's nice, as it used to be. But we all know it's closer to a pancake than it ever has been before. I don't need someone to tell me. Honestly, I would rather women's shirts come in cup sizes. When you're 
large busted, they all fit poorly. I'd be able to quantify my butt size goals. This would be life changing. Do you know how frustrating it is to buy underwear for a small size waist, but a big ass is always trapped in between cheeks. So uncomfortable. I'm all for this. I would fucking love that because I might have the hips of a horse, but I got the of a malnourished child. The mal. Honestly, I think you can make shopping more difficult. I can barely find my bra size in a store. I don't want to go on a treasure hunt just to find underwear too. Also, men would get more annoying. It's bad enough they have the audacity to ask women their cup size. I don't want to be bothered about my size too. Partners of sleep talkers or sleepwalkers, what gems have you to share? My boyfriend once blurted out, you're putting bread in my ears in his sleep. Mumbled something unintelligible, followed up with, and I'm becoming a sandwich. Still makes me laugh whenever I remember. Fantastic sleep songs with lyrics which are utterly bizarre. My two absolute favorites have been, oh, whoa, whoa, it's a corner cat. Play my rules and you'll always be a country cowboy. Repeated about five times and finished with a, yeah. I'm the sleep talker. A long while back, my fiance was working a job where she didn't get home until after midnight. She came home one night and was leaning over the table on my side of the bed. She swears up and down that I looked up at her, smacked her on top of the head, and, and when she asked what the hell, that I told her I was checking to see if she was a ghost. Now, I do remember having a dream like this, but in my dream, my hand did go through her head, proving she was a ghost. My aunt likes to tell the story about her and my cousin sharing a hotel room one time. My aunt woke up having to pee and found my cousin sitting up in a bed with her arms folded across her abdomen, kind of rocking back and forth, giggling quietly. That's horrifying. When my aunt asked her what she was doing, my cousin said, I'm holding a baby and has an adult smile. I found this story deeply unsettling. I feel like any sane person would. He started shouting that he couldn't feel his left arm. I pointed out he was pinching his pillow, not his arm. He then freaked out that he had lost his arm. I pointed out his arm was under his pillow. He said, okay, and started snoring. It took me another hour to go back to sleep. He didn't wake up at all. My girlfriend was sleep working one night. Can we get that done this week? Huh? Can we get that done this week? Sorry. Can we get that done this week, please? Okay, thanks. I'd be the king of Monaco. My wife said this one night out of nowhere. The funniest part was her tone of voice. Proud and assertive, like she was really sure of her claim to the throne. Anyway, joke's on her. Monaco is a principality. My brother did that in the middle of the night. He would get up, go into the living room, and say some nonsense to our parents and go back to bed. It was actually pretty creepy the first times because he was like, they are in the walls. They are. Napping with the boyfriend, a loud noise wakes me, but he's still out. Me, what was that? Him, either a tree or a magic eraser. My wife started screaming one night that she was lost in the grocery store and that no matter where she went, she couldn't find her way out. I asked her has she tried to check out at the registers. She then looked at me and said in her most sincere voice, that's why you're the smartest person I know. And she rolled over and fell back asleep. Ex roommate talked in his sleep. Once he cried out, no Gandalf, you will get $10 million cash, but Samuel L. Jackson will be there to shout motherfucker for every dollar you spend. Will you be happy and why? If you just invest it, never touch it, and just spend the actual capital gains slash interest, does that count as spending the dollars for the motherfuckers? I imagine the motherfuckers would start the moment you hand over your cash to the bank. That or a philosophical discussion on the nature of money. I wouldn't spend a single dollar in the hopes that it keeps the miracle that is Sam Jackson alive until he has yelled for every dollar that I'll never spend. 120 year old Sam Jackson screaming, why won't you motherfuckers let me die? Would be both funny and sad. So if I spend $50, he's there shouting motherfucker 50 times. I feel like I'd enjoy it way more than he would. He'd probably lose his voice by the end of the day. I'd buy him out of whatever a cruel cosmic deal he signed up for to help him escape from the hell of monitoring my purchases until he dies. Where is the downside? It takes around one second for Samuel L. Jackson to say motherfucker. If I spend all 10 million in one go, you will be saying motherfucker for 115 days straight. I'd say that's money well spent. I would have so much fun with this during moments of silence. The money tray that gets passed around in a church. Donations to your local library. Yeah, man. $10 million and Samuel L. Jackson is basically my new best friend. Sign me up twice. Charge people $2 for every $1 I spend in order to meet Samuel L. Jackson. What are some very comforting facts? Scientists earlier this year made a massive breakthrough in curing blindness, like virgin a cure. It was masked by the virus headline though. Crows and ravens love to play in the snow. One of their favorite activities is rolling hills. All those embarrassing, cringy memories that come flooding into your mind when you least expect it, nobody else remembers them. Every last one of us has them. It's part of this complicated process called living. While you're busy remembering yours, everyone else is remembering their own. It's in the past. Nothing you can do right now can make it any better. Chalk it up as a lesson and wreak the experience. Bees take naps and flowers. So yeah, it's okay to need a nap. Even busy bees do. If you make it to the airport without dying, you've already past the deadliest part of plane travel. Cows have best friends. Some fish like to be pet. Goldfish can recognize their owner. Damn, he'd been watching you this whole time and you didn't even know. There's a volunteer organization
organization called No One Dies Alone. You're at Sacred Hearts Medical Center at your terminal. You need a companion from someone to talk to or just someone to hold your hand. They'll make sure someone will be there for you. Other hospitals have this too. Cheetahs are very shy animals, so some zoos give them support dogs like those for humans. It's the cutest thing ever. I actually knew that one. That one's very cute. In dog or wolf movies where they use real life dog actors, people who have to edit all that sometimes have to add CGI tails because the dogs can't stop wagging their tail as they are so happy. Dogs make cute little sneezing sounds to tell you that they are playing and not fighting. Jupiter's gravitational mass is so immense, modern science believes it's been protecting us from meteors for millions of years. NSFW! If you suddenly discovered that people you had fantasized about while masturbating were always fully aware of this, what would your first thoughts be? Do they know the details or just that it happened? Andy jerked- <laughs> I don't want to say this! This is so weird! Andy jerked it while fantasizing about railing on the balcony while I ate out my mother is one thing. Andy mashed to me is an entirely different. There's gonna be a lot of sensors in this one. Hope that they either ignore it or join me on the fun. Do they know I know that they know? If they're still talking to you, that's probably a good sign. In most cases, this would probably just mean that a bunch of stars and celebrities would know what they already know. Hang on. People do what when they watch this? Star. Work would be awkward. Bruh. Especially weird since I'm self-employed. No! Does this include only intentional thoughts or are weird unintentional intrusive thoughts included as well? Therefore, I'm immediately leaving for Nepal where I intend to live as a goat. I'm gonna need to go on a bit of an apology tour. Not a long one, but still. Thank God that one's over. What's the weirdest compliment you've ever been given? In seventh grade, I wore a fanny pack to school to hold stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which I played with at lunch. Once while walking down the hallway, an eighth grader I never met before was like, dude, I like your fanny pack. Gave me a high five and kept walking. I never saw him again. And miraculously, nobody ever picked on me about it. To my face, at least. I had pink eye and the nurse was looking into my non-infected eye. You have beautiful retinas. Thank you? Then I'm like a piece of furniture. Don't do much, but you notice when I'm not there. A woman I was talking to in my dad's shop thought I was not me, but my sister. When I tried to correct her that I am me, she told me, No, you are not. Insert my name is fat and has short hair. She is not beautiful like you. Like, what the f***, lady? My four-year-old son told me I smelled like music. When I asked what kind of music, he said, Music you dance to. Still the best compliment I have received to date. My friends and I were talking about what kind of potatoes we'd be. One of my best friends told me, You'd be a loaded baked potato. People pay extra for that good <laughs> An old lady once told me she wishes she was 60 years younger. Then she would give me some confidence. It was the most unsettling, funniest, and somehow most charming compliment I've ever seen. You are so tan. How did you get so tan? I'm Indian. <laughs> All right, then keep your secrets. Peacer, Peacer, okay. Piercer, who pierced my ears back in August, told me my ears were perfect and to call her if anyone said otherwise and she would fight them for me. A teacher in high school told me several times that I had a perfectly shaped head. Someone told me my eyes were upside down. Not sure what that means or if it was a compliment, but they seem friendly. With the right makeup, you'd make a really good looking girl. I'm a guy, by the way. If life was someday proven to be a simulation, what glitch or anomaly could you point to as a major clue that we'd missed. When your pen gets lost as soon as it hits the floor and then appears right there after some time? Well, yesterday while driving with my daughter in the car, she says, Dad, I'm starting to feel like this whole human thing isn't real. So I guess that would be confirmed as my first hint. Dreaming. How it could be a gateway to another universe or version of yourself. And how do we manage to forget most dreams, especially the important ones? Deja Reve. It's similar to Deja Vu, but it's where you've dreamed of a future moment. Nice try, simulation developers. Often when I learn about something new I've never heard about, all of the sudden, it starts appearing randomly in some TV show I'm watching or a news or Reddit article. They should fix the targeted ad algorithm to make it less obvious I'm living in a simulation. Some get sick for no reason, and some who should be sick because of how they live seem super healthy. Millions of years of evolution, and we still can accidentally bite our own tongue? That's some bullshit. The Bader meinhof phenomenon. When you learn something new, it seems like you see it everywhere right after that. Like a video game, when you learn some new move, then it is immediately applicable to your life. Periods. Let's leave a trail of blood for predators to follow at the same time. I'm currently up in a fetal position for cramps. Super suspicious. Sounds like it was made by the same people who put Sims in a pool and removed the ladder so they can drown. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is barking. Look around the room you're in. Choose any random object within the room. What does it feel like to lick that object? You never know what it feels like to have licked it. But have you ever? Single biggest glitch in my book. The fact that the moon and the sun can just about perfectly eclipse each other. What are the odds that the moon and sun would be the sizes they are and distances from the earth that they are allowed that to happen? What's something that people think makes them look cool but actually has the opposite effect? Posting photos of cash on social media. I always think it is funny how doing that is commonly accepted. Whereas if you screenshotted your bank account or net worth, you'd be an ass. Bragging about 
about not reading. When people post their weed on Snapchat. Never admitting when you're wrong. It may seem like a confidence power play, however, most people just don't care enough about you to say anything or indicate that they noticed. They'll just slowly drift away from you till one day you're all alone, wondering why no one with any level of competence wants to hang out or work with you. When babies get excited about walking. Real fucking cool, baby. I can walk too. Please stop blasting your music in places where people cannot escape it. I see your earbuds in your pocket, please. Salvation. People listening to their voice messages with many people around. I unironically like wearing fingerless gloves for actual tasks, not just out and about. When people ask me why I wear them, I tell them it's because I'm so cool. I'm not exactly certain how uncool they make me, but I know it's a lot. Elitism. It's fucking stupid to attack someone who enjoys a hobby only just because it doesn't put his life on it. One-upping and putting other people down to make yourself look good. Rife in white-collar jobs. I despise people who do it. Being an asshole while hiding behind the, it's just a joke. Stop taking it seriously. Why can't you take a joke? Statements. Hating all genres of music, except the one they like. I learned this the hard way by only liking heavy metal and f***ing on all other music without giving it chance as a teen. Metal's still my favorite, but all genres have good music. Not modern country, though. I'm not sure if this is just an Australian thing, but people who rev their cars or motorbikes really loud. And it's usually quite late at night, while most people are trying to sleep. F***ing on things other people like. We all have the stuff we don't like, but if you spend all your time putting down everything a person is interested in, you don't look cool or edgy. You look like a d with no interests. People who come out with life lessons and quotes. They think they are so profound and deep, but I think they come off as big-headed and stupid. Students and teachers of Reddit, what's the best forgot to turn off the mic story during virtual learning? I had to defend my thesis over Zoom, and many professors came into the call to watch. My thesis was about immune response and fish to parasites. One professor joined late and forgot to mute her mic, and we got treated to this little gem. Shh. Mommy is learning about fish parasites, which is what you'll get if you don't stop peeing in the koi pond. Bruh. Not really anything super weird, was in a meeting with my class for the first day of school, and I had forgotten to mute myself. Then I had proceeded to start noisily baby talking my cat, who was in my lap at the time. Embarrassing. A girl's mom. Who the f*** you on the computer for this early in the morning? And asking the same thing over and over. Teacher. I think your mic is on. English Zoom call. Teacher was holding us like 15 minutes after the period had ended. She said something along the lines of, keep working arduously. And I responded with, if she says arduously one more time, I'm going to flip table. I was not on mute. Bummer. Sorry, buddy. When I was doing an online algebra camp, teacher forgot to turn off his mic while we were supposed to be doing some problems. He said, I f***ing hate math. Me too, dude. Me too. In one of my classes, this girl wrote in the Zoom chat, this is so f***ing boring, not realizing that the professor could see it. Ironically, my IT teacher forgot to turn off his mic and camera and proceeded to get in a very heated argument on the phone with his ex-girlfriend, who he has a kid with. Did I mention she's also a teacher at our school? Yeah, most awkward five minutes of my life before he realized. In a thermodynamics class, one of the students said, holy sh this is so much, after covering a large set of equations related to f f f gasity Everyone found it relatable. Was in training before classes started this year. 200-ish teachers. Only pr What did you falsely believe as a kid? I watched a lot of Wallace and Gromit and actually thought the moon was made of cheese. That the Bermuda Triangle was way more deadly than it is. My stepdad was in the Navy and had a cruise that went through it. I was legitimately afraid his ship would be sunk and no trace ever found. I used to see the signs around stores that said shoplifters will be prosecuted. I didn't know what shoplifting meant. I figured it was like weightlifting with the entire store building as the weight. I pictured big, burly, bald men that like to go around heavy store buildings overhead grunting and red face. I was afraid someone would try to do it while we were out shopping. I once pointed out some big, muscular guy in a store and whispered to my mother that he must be one of those shoplifters. She shushed me. I thought teachers lived at the school. That the guard in every mall will arrest a loud child. Shadows had to be made of something, right? You could see them. Therefore, they had to be made of stuff. Flawless logic. I vaguely remember picking at the edge of one, trying to peel it off. That there was a horrible monster growling all night outside in the dark beyond my room. It was my dad snoring. Bro, did you ever tell your dad this? It all got solved eventually. As I remember it, took a while before I had the guts to address the monster problem, though. Who's your favorite fictional couple? Me. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend. Frodo and Sam. Fry and Leela. Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy. Olive's parents from Easy A. Homer and Marge Simpson. Vegeta and Bulma. What's the best TV series of all time? Our Planet, narrated by David Attenborough. Years ago, you would have seen Game of Thrones far more frequently in this thread. Alas, the ball was dropped hard in its last couple seasons. Not the best TV series of all time. That was literally the question, then why are you still answering? But the first three seasons of Arrested Development are up there with the best three seasons of any of the shows mentioned here. The Sopranos. Fleabag. It's a short two seasons of six episodes each, but it is flawlessly executed with not a single moment wasted. A strange creation for TV where largest is usually the norm. It might be more comparable to a brilliant movie or even a play. It was after all adapted from a one woman show. It's just art. Malcolm in the Middle. Really loved the prequel to Breaking Bad. Golden Age Simpsons. It's not even close. What can you buy for one dollar in your country? One kilo mango. Ramen. Ramen. Hope and disappointment in the form of a lottery ticket. What can you buy in your country for one dollar? One pound. 
lollipop. Add it. Six lollipops. My work is worth 23 lollipops per hour. That's disheartening. 12 minutes on a parking meter. A can of beans? Maybe. On sale. A load of clean laundry. Correction. A load of clean, wet laundry. Reply with your drink of choice and bartender will tell you what it says about you. What is your drink? Vodka cranberry. Urinary tract infection. I don't make the rules. Chocolate milk shaken, not stirred. Ah, uh, chocolate milk. The rich man's milk. Sir, can I see your ID? Gin and tonic. My grandmother used to drink gin and tonics when I asked her why. She said, no matter where you go, it's pretty hard for someone to f*** that up. Cheapest beer on tap. A dying breed, possibly a working class hero. Amaretto sour. You probably are the one to hold your friend's hair back when they're picking at the end of their night. I'm gonna assume that says, oh yeah. Edit. Puking. Ball. I swear I'm only a few rounds deep. Double shot of whiskey. Neat. And a water, please. This is not your first rodeo. Tequila sunrise. Why do you love headaches? People who are ugly. What is one of the benefits of being ugly? You feel like a ninja. No one notices you. People leave me alone more. I can walk alone at night in the dark and not worry about getting attacked. I'm female, and I know that no guy is prowling for this sh You get to see the real side of people. People won't find a need to act to get in your good books so you can see when an asshole is an asshole. Unless you're rich, you can be sure people will love you for who you are. The battery on my phone lasts for a very long period. Ask your mom, what's the hottest accent and why? Scottish. I don't want to comprehend a single word while you are flirting with me. Aussie mate. Yeah, f***ing right. Has anyone heard of Idris Elba? Lord, the Brits have me locked in. Just came here to see how low German accent is. Was not disappointed. Russians, they always sound serious and angry about literally anything they're talking about. Like, they'll say, please take off your pants. And you gotta listen to them because you're afraid they're gonna slit your throat with a broken Smirnoff vodka bottle and mix your blood with their next bottle. Any accent can made to be hot, so long as the individual has consumed a pepper of some sort. The Bell variety has been eliminated for obvious reasons. Irish, because it's f***ing hot. King hot experience you or someone you know has ever had with a telephone or a mobile phone. My husband and I had gone shopping and when we pulled in our driveway, a sheriff was there and we asked if we could help him. He asked if anyone was in there, meaning in the house, and my husband said there better not be. We checked the house and nobody was in there, but while we were looking, the sheriff told us our phone number had called 911 several times and hung up, so he was sent to check it out. Ooh, f me, I do not like this one. Not as spooky as some of these comments, but back in middle school when the movie The Ring had just come out, I was watching it at my best friend's house. We always watch movies in the creepy ass basement downstairs that gave me the creeps on a normal day. We were sitting in the dark and just saw the scene in the movie where the creepy haunted tape is played and the phone starts to ring in the movie. At the exact same time, her phone rang. If you hadn't seen the movie, the phone rings and on the other end of the line, it's a terrifying girl's voice that says seven days, meaning you have seven days until you die. I made her answer the phone. Her house, her phone. It was her brother's friend. He wasn't in the house and had no idea what we were doing, so it was just a super creepy coincidence. I was ringing my fiance after work once and halfway through the call, the audio randomly switched to someone else's call. Some roofer discussing quotes with a client. They were talking to each other fine. Couldn't hear me. I could only hear the roofer and my fiance go only got silence. I had no idea mobile phones could get cross connections. It really freaked me out at the time. My friend called me in a panic once. When I picked up, they asked if I was safe, if I'm by myself, etc. And sounded pretty worked up. I asked what was wrong and they said that someone had called them using my number. But it was an older man saying really strange, incomprehensible things about how I was unsafe and that they needed to pay for my safety. Apparently, it was some sort of common scam, but still it shook me up. Like 20 years ago, I was living alone in my first apartment. One morning, I woke up to my alarm going off and like, one second after my cell phone rang, my landline phone rang, and my computer turned itself on all at the exact same time. I just sat there in my bed, fumbling after my phone for a second, and then both phones stopped ringing. Computer stayed on, though, and I shut off my alarm. No missed call on my phone. I heard it off like some weird circumstance with a power surge involved or whatever, but the more I think of it, I can't explain it. What is your worst experience on an airplane? An old lady died in the seat next to me. She was shivering with a blanket on, and then she had a hot tea. A few minutes later, she spilled the tea and was no longer shivering. The airline gave me a boatload of air miles for my sharing space with a corpse inconvenience. You know, they don't officially consider someone dead until it's declared by a doctor or a paramedic? They didn't tell any other passengers. Not that they needed to, just me and the flight crew knew she was gone. On a flight from Paris to NYC, a kid about three years old kicked the back of my seat the whole time, only stopping for naps. Nicolette was her name. Ah, Nicolette, you are going to get a fist to the throat, you bitch. When I was about 11, my family was flying from Windhoek to Frankfurt, about a 12 hour flight. I was sitting next to my brother, 12, and he was sleeping. I was reading a book or something. All of a sudden, my brother startles awake and projectile vomits all over everything. My clothes, hair, the seat in front of us, our carry-ons that were at our feet, himself, everything. We were about three hours into the flight, so we had nine hours to go. I didn't have a change of clothes in my carry-on, so I had to sit in the soaked vomit- uh, So I had to sit in the vomit-soaked clothes with my vomit-covered luggage for the rest of the flight. My brother definitely had it worse. He had food poisoning and was throwing up in the airplane bathroom for the rest of the trip. They had to take him off the flight in a wheelchair and take him straight to a medical ward where he was given IVs for a couple hours, and we missed our connecting flight. Our poor mom had to pay 2000 for tickets for a new flight. Woman in front of me kept complaining 
how bad she had to pee, and a few minutes later, it smells straight up like cat pee throughout the entire plane. She peed in a Coke can and spilled it all over the floor and laughed about it the entire plane ride. Oh yeah, this happened at the beginning of the flight. Why would you not just get up and go pee? That's disgusting. I was sandwiched between two very large people that took half of my seat. They were breathing so loud and kept farting. Men of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing a woman has ever said to you? I went to um, a restaurant with my friend Jordan one time this year, and this random, like, 50-year-old woman came up to me and complimented my eyes, and like, I wasn't looking at her at all. It was just so weird. It was very creepy. She told me she would rather kill me and then herself than see me with someone else. So since you're still alive, how long have y'all been together now? I want to have your ADHD infested children. At a bar, a woman a good 20 years older than me walked up from behind me, ran her hands through my hair and said, I'm a dominatrix. Sorry, I'm more of an Autobot person. A woman I matched with on Tinder told me she likes to kill animals and then asked to meet me in the middle of the woods. I figured that might be a red flag, so unmatched and never went back to Tinder. Swiped left so hard, Tinder uninstalled. I'm like really submissive. Like, I let a guy sh** in my mouth once and I didn't even like him that much. For context, it was our second and last date. I worked at a fast food place years ago. My girlfriend came in for a milkshake and was waiting at the end of the counter with uh, one of our regulars. Doris, the regular, was near 90 years old and had invited me home to have pot roast at her house multiple times. I was being a pain and put about a foot of whipped cream over the top of the lid of my girlfriend's milkshake and brought it to her. Doris looked at her, then looked at me deadpan and said, I wish you'd cream me like that. Doris never ordered desserts. Edit, added a much needed space. You're so cute. I want to break into your room, kill you, and stuff you so that we can be together forever. I started locking the doors religiously afterwards. What's something from the early days of the internet which younger generations may not know about? The need to set a good away message on AIM, since it may be up for over a day before you can get back on. Under construction, banners, images, and gifts. They were on every page. The page was always under construction. You'd put one there while you were writing the HTML and then take it out when the final version was done. But way too many people never bothered with that step. Visitor counters and guest books, I almost always left a message. Before it was all corporate, so many homemade pages for an interest you could think of. I don't mean MySpace or Tumblr either. Crappy HTML blinking graphics, instrumental music in the background. I met one of my oldest online friends in 1997 through a site he made of our favorite band. We were we were email pen pals before social media was a thing. Waiting for an hour for an image to download line by line. ICQ, AIM, and MSN. Hi, ASL, 35M, MN. You? Or the most popular one, 18F, Cali. Lol. Downloading a song from LimeWire and then going to listen to it and then you hear, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I used to keep a magazine beside the computer so I could read something while waiting for a webpage to load. Who is your example of, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain? Scott is Minecraft. Hey, 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 hey. Jim Jones. He originally stood up for civil rights when it was really unpopular, was hospitalized and accidentally placed in the black ward. When the doctors found out, they tried to move him, but he refused. Then he became a cult leader and uses power and influence to end the lives of a thousand people. Working in restaurant kitchens, you either burn out young or become the boss that everyone hates. There's exceptions, but that's usually the rule. My dad used to annoy me by calling my Pokemon cards Pokemans. Now my kids have them and I do the same thing and it annoys the shit out of them. Edit. Thanks for the Pokemon gold. Bill Cosby was once nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Also, the Emmys gave him a humanitarian award. Also the President Medal of Freedom. I want to see a villain that lived long enough to become the hero because that's far more interesting. Ellen DeGeneres. What was okay 10 years ago, but today is not. My lower back. Coughing. Used to cough to stifle a fart. Now I'd rather shit myself. Now we fart to distract from our coughs. Just here to remind everyone that 10 years ago was 2012. Mail arriving at its destination in three to five days. Naming your daughter Isis. Or naming her Alexa. Or Karen. Not you. Turn off. Thank you. Rooting for Jared from Subway. Harambe. Edit. Holy moly. Thanks for the awards. F***s out. Redditors. What's something the internet was crazy about but is now forgotten? AOL chat rooms. ASL. Poking on Facebook. Spinning under construction gifts on our website. The dancing baby gifts. One of the earliest memes I ever saw. Ooga chaka. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Chuck Norris jokes. Neopets. Oh, I love Neopets so much. Neon Cat. Who would make a perfect female president of the United States of America and why? Anybody smart enough to deserve the job isn't stupid enough to take the job. Anyone who wants to be president should never be allowed to be president. The mom from Malcolm in the Middle. That sense of authority, fear, and emotional deception she was capable of would make her a great president not to f*** with. My mom. She whooped this whole country into shape and have everyone in bed by 9.30. Dolly Parton. Everyone likes Dolly. My dog. She's a good girl. Treats for everyone. The, <laughs> the girl reading this. Winky face. Lisa Simpson. What's one thing you'll never do no matter what? Climb Everest. I'm almost finished with Into Thin Air. All I could think about as I read about the descent was nope, not doing that. And why would anyone do that? Spelunking. F*** that. I have pretty bad claustrophobia and doing that would make me combust. Cave diving. Just how strong of a death wish can someone actually have? People die constantly doing it on dry land and you're gonna add scuba gear to the mo and water to the mix? Absolutely f***ing not. That. But you would do anything for love, I assume. Except that, yeah. Bungee jumping. Let me guess. A broken rubber brought you into this world and a broken rubber can take you out? Edit. Spelling. Stop at red lights in GTA. Give you up. Die drowning. That's my worst nightmare. I don't think that's your choice, my dude. 
dude. Nah, he'll live drowning. You are held at gunpoint, and your kidnappers will not kill you if you can speak about a topic for 30 minutes straight. What are you talking about? Numbers. I mean, there must be hundreds of them to talk about. One, seven, 83, edit. Four. The best number is 73. 73 is the 21st prime number. It's mirror. 37 is the 12th, and it's mirror. 21 is the product of multiplying. Hang on to your hats. Seven and three. But in binary, 73 is a palindrome. One zero zero one zero zero one, which is backwards is one zero zero one zero zero one. Exactly the same. Broad topic, animals, specific topic, frogs. I like the way you think. Frogs are one of my favorite animals. They are 80% mouth. Snakes are just a bag of throat. I'd give him a very convincing 30 minute lecture on why he should kill me. And the final, most compelling argument in this, it's only been 29 minutes and 58 seconds. My anxiety. Gotta take advantage of this free therapy session. Oh, come on. That's me. That's me. They better be prepared for an hour of nerd ramblings if they don't shoot me first. My fan fiction. They might, they might shoot you right away. A us lore. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, there was sauce. What's something that would be 100% better if it was slightly shorter? Unskippable ads on YouTube. Average work hours. Lines at any amusement park. Colds. Kevin Hart. You would have so much more material. Technically, you'd have less material. Saturday night live skits. The amount of time I spend every night in existential crisis mode before I finally fall asleep. What's the best response to? I hate you. So anyways, I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday. Okay, I know. Kiss. I hate me too, but I don't complain about it. I never thought about you at all. You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. Sounds like a you issue. Which fictional character's death hit you hard? Wow. Well, scrolling through this post is quite risky. Brooks and Tommy in Shawshank Redemption, they're both so tragic. Brooks was here. Sobs. Littlefoot's mom. My first actual confrontation with death as a child. Really screwed with me. Or so my mom says. Charlotte in the original version of Charlotte's Web. The dog in I Am Legend. Sirius Black. Cried while reading the book and watching the movie. Dobby from Harry Potter. He didn't even need to die. What a pointless death to such a lovely creature. Bambi's mom. What's the grossest thing you've ever seen at a stranger's house. I used to work for a furniture company doing deliveries and sometimes repos. As a rule of thumb, if you're doing a repo, the house you're about to go in is usually nasty as hell. The one that sticks out in memory was no exception. It was more of a compound of two or three cracked dens, rotten, saggy floors, roof falling in, just f***ing nasty. We had to repossess a stove they had bought maybe a month before, and in that short time, it had become caked with grease and infested with roaches. When we got it back to the store, the manager told us to put it out back, as in outside, because he didn't want the store to become infested. A week or two later, a couple that refurbished old appliances came in and bought it for $20. I went to a friend's house so he could do some work on my car. After we finished, hours later, I really needed to pee, so I asked him if I could use his restroom prior to driving home. He seemed hesitant at first, but finally said yes. I regret ever asking. They were full-on hoarder family. There was barely enough room to walk in the front door to the bathroom. And once in the bathroom, literally just the toilet bowl was visible. I pretended to pee and hightailed it out of there and peed at the gas station up the street. A thick sheet of mold under the fridge. So thick I thought it was a rug. Someone whose house I was working in told us they don't flush the toilet until it's full. They weren't lying. I walked into a new friend's apartment for the first time and turns out they were like a hardcore hoarder. The stench was just f***ing the worst thing I've ever smelled in my life. And he like did not seem to have a problem with it at all. One of the nicest people I've ever met to this day, but man that was such a shock. We lost touch over the years, but I heard he got help and is now married with two kids living on the east coast. At least this one was a happy ending. Yeah, he was a super good dude, just had some demons. This dude had a bucket by his sofa that he would just spit in. Ugh, just thinking back to it now makes me boke. It was disgusting. Once while using my friend's bathroom, I saw a portrait they hung that was the most horrifyingly disgusting misshaped person I've ever seen. He hung it right above the sink so you had to look at it while you washed up. What's a phrase you're sick of hearing? I worked in offices for years, so going forward makes my eyes twitch now. Giving time back when ending a meeting two minutes early. I'm giving you the gift of time today. Why thank you for seven minutes. You'll find someone when the time is right. When is that damn time? When it's right, duh. 315. Both hands pointing right. We need to normalize. Tell me without telling me. One more time for the people in the back. I was today years old. Didn't ask. It's just becoming annoying now. Didn't ask. I'm sorry. Sorry, it was too perfect. Didn't ask. I love didn't ask. Plus ratio. Plus person outsold. What's the scariest thing you've woken up to in the middle of the night? My grandmother just standing there in the dark by my bed, quietly wringing her hands and staring at me. Centipede crawling on my face. I still shiver thinking about it when that happened. Cat dropping a giant <laughs> spider on my chest, then giant spider disappearing in my panic. My wife sitting straight up out of bed and screaming while pointing down the hallway. She talks in her sleep. Usually it's hilarious. This time, it was not. I saw my stuffed animal leave the room. I woke up to use the restroom, got up, smack. Something smacked the f*** out of me. Turns out my entire freaking arm was asleep, and I got up, and the motion just launched it into my face. Almost didn't have to go to the bathroom afterwards. Why are you hitting yourself? A mountain lion purring behind my head through the fabric of the tent. Mountain lion was found as a kitten, raised by people, and released back to the wild. Now it just roams the night looking for human to be near. Then it purrs. How do you feel when you're nude? Like I need pockets. Cold. Fat. I also feel fat, and I'm in good shape. But I was once a fat kid, and that mentality got branded forever. I feel that one big time. Once a fat kid, always a fat kid. Still though, love yourself. Good man. I swing my dong. I feel with my whole body.
body, but my fingertips are still used most, nude or not. How do you feel? Sometimes I use my toes, my boobs. I squeeze them like stress balls. Anybody else hoping they're a guy? Tired, but I feel that while dressed too. Like one of those hairless cats. What is a lot more dangerous than people think? Playing the, well, my alarm turned off, but I just want to rest my eyes for a bit game. Pigs. They look slow and fat. Saw a guy nearly get killed by a pig. First rule for working with pigs, don't fall over in front of them. Also, pig bites hurt. Reddit advice. Sitting for long periods of time. What would you do if you had a clone? First of all, I'd clarify which one of the two is really the clone. Get enough jobs so we didn't have to worry about money. I'd swap out each shift. I'd take this one, they get the next. Half the workload, same amount of money, twice as much time for everything else. Twice the expenses too though. Play a ton of board games. Make him go to work for me. What makes you think your clone would do that? My clone would tell me to f*** off. Why is everyone acting like a clone is a robot who will do whatever you say? Use him for spare parts. Massage my back. I'll finally have someone who knows how to do it and where I need it most. If men only want one thing, what is it? Someone to discuss most profound thoughts. That sexy lava lamp. Damn. Love and clear communication. No double standard, please. That's two things. Love and clear communication. To dig a big hole at the beach. To be left alone. I have no idea, but I hear it's disgusting. The Krabby Patty secret formula. What's a movie you saw way too young? Gremlins. I remember being terrified once they'd been fed after midnight. I have no memory of the screaming night terror I had in my sleep, but despite extensive cleaning by my mom, the bedroom still smelled of my vomit in the morning. Same movie for me. Saw it in theater is one of the first in theater movies. Was terrified of the bathtub for weeks. The Exorcist. I was 19 when I saw The Exorcist and I was still too young. The Ring. I still am so frightened to walk past the TV at night. I've seen Scary Movie 3, The Grudge, all the Ring movies many times as an adult. Super cheesy. And I'm not afraid of any of the other movies or anything, but I'm still ducking terrified of the girl from the original Ring. Jaws. How long did it take you to swim in the ocean after that? The ocean? It took me a couple of years to get in a swimming pool. I'm still scared of swimming in the ocean. Silence of the Lambs. To this day, I can't see those words without making the Anthony Hopkins tongue noise in my head. Same. Homesick from school one day. Old enough to be home alone, but way too young to be watching How to Sew a Skin Suit. My mom took me to the theater to see Halloween in 1978. I was six. Then in 1980, she took me to see Don't Answer the Phone when I was eight. Your mom was playing the desensitization game. Saw when I was like six or seven. Saw what? What did you see? Dad? Father? What's the dumbest lyrics in history? <laughs> England is my city. She's not a lesbian. For pee, she turned pesbian. Singing about all women who are sexually attracted. Pez dispensers, I see. Girl, I know your favorite beer because you told me and I bought it. Chris Lane. That's kind of him. Who said romance was dead? These answers are going to end up on an AI-generated text-to-speech TikTok video with subway surfers playing in the background. Just for that, I, I, I'm, I'm almost certain that the editor is not going to put subway surfers on this video. You know, we do other stuff like Temple Run and Spider-Man. Um, maybe Minecraft. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just work here. I was a geisha when he was a samurai. Somehow I understood him even though he spoke Thai. Nicki Minaj. Okay. Nicki Minaj. Thank you very much. I think I lost a few brain cells reading this. Thanks, Nicki. They call her big booty because she got a big booty. Riveting. I'm in the kitchen. Yams everywhere. I'm afraid of the dark, especially when I'm in a park and no one else is around. Ooh, I get the shivers. I don't want to see a ghost. It's a sight that I fear most. I'd rather have a piece of toast than <laughs> watch the evening news. Desiree, life. This sounds like the kind of poem I would try to write when I was a little kid. Like, it sounds like a third grade writing assignment to write a Halloween poem or something. What is your strongest opinion that's not political, religious, or moral? Uh, Pokemon is the greatest video game franchise of all time. Pineapple does not belong on pizza. Radio ads that have honking horns or sirens should be illegal, as should billboards. If I buy a car, I want to own it without paying a subscription to use the radio or heated steering wheel. Ads with the skip button are more effective than ones without. If an ad has a skip button, you can choose whenever you're interested in said product or not. This proves more clear info to advertisers too. An unskippable ad makes a person associate the company with a negative experience, therefore downgrading the company. People should learn that saying, I don't know, is a perfectly acceptable thing to say and very often the most accurate. It's much more important to be predictable on the road than polite. When it, <clears throat> when it is your turn, go. It's not a real meeting if there's no agenda. Plans are useless, but planning is essential. Failure to plan is planning to fail. What are some behaviors that scream unintelligence? Obsessively telling everybody how intelligent you are. Do I need to remind you of my IQ from that Facebook quiz again? Getting angry when someone asks them to explain their point. Bonus if they say, do your own research. <clears throat> I just started driving for Uber XL. The amount of people who think they can fit eight people with all their luggage into a mid-sized SUV is astonishing. You can see which car comes to pick you up and it says it fits five people. If you have a piece of luggage each, then it's more like three people. I had one group sit there and stare me down like they didn't understand. I swear some people just have mental limit for figuring things out and they all find each other and never get anywhere. Telling people that you are a member of Mensa at every opportunity. What the hell? is Mensa. Hold on, I'm googling this. <laughs> 
High IQ society? Oh, go f*** yourself. Calling names in an argument. Well, you're a poopy head. Nah, son. You're the poopy head. Ugh. You're a poopy butthole head. Thinking saying no is mean. Or that no means yes. Is this being unintelligent or just being shitty? Pooping in the aisles at Walmart. Your username is now a store. What do you sell? Well, as I am says Mason on every social media platform except Twitter, which is says Mason live, <clears throat> I would sell advice. Not fences. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Thank you. Username never fence. Sounds like something a fence store would say. I see right through your charade. Nothing at all. So NFTs? Not fucking things. Non-functional testicles. Was the best kind of testicles. Coffee for your enemies. Username death espresso. Ben Benny Benjamin says Ben Bennies and Benjamins. You need to find a Jerry. Jerry, Jeremy, and Jeremiah is what they need. It's teeth from a stegosaurus. Guaranteed no triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> Reddit username whale cucks. Boy, do I have a product for you. Is it fun for the whole family? Fun for the whale family. Oh, that's disgusting. Wind. For free. Now that's a great price. What's something that you like that the vast majority of people hate? Um, lime cucumber Gatorade. I think it's my favorite flavor. I love untangling things. Your Christmas lights end up in a ball and there's no telling where it starts or ends. Give. Got a necklace that got rolled up into a total mess? I'm your detangler. Headphones come out of your pocket looking like a tangela? No nope problem. Total zen for me. Wish I could make a few bucks with it, though. People that talk a lot, so I don't need to. I like listening to them, and I find their energy refreshing. Everything about the airport. I don't know why, but it's so fascinating. Honestly, I like it more than the trip sometimes. Apparently, a lot of people don't like the lemon yellow starburst candy, and that's the one I prefer. I'm a big citrus guy myself. I prefer the yellow starburst. It's good. Doing the dishes. I find it so calming. Hey, you free later? Wrapping presents. It's super therapeutic and relaxing to me. I'll wrap everyone's presents in the house, even the ones that they have to give to other people. If everyone would just get off my about it, mother, and let me take my time, I'd love it. I did it for Macy's one Christmas and learned how to do it. Every edge and fold is clean, and the bows are majestic as heck. And I still do my own that way, but my mom will ask me to wrap something for her and then stand there and tell me I'm so slow and it doesn't have to be perfect, blah, blah, blah. Ma'am, you asked me because you know I'm good at it. If it takes five minutes, that's how long it takes. Using my blinker. If you had a chance to rename the letter W from W to so something else, what would it be? Double V! It's literally two Vs. So, let's see what else everyone else has to say. What? Wumbo. Double V. Based. W. Thought they said you were changing the name. B. That's short. Easy to say and understand. Wubble do. Up M. Down M. Flip M. What popular sayings are bullshit? Cheaters never win. What goes around comes around. Bullshit. I've seen people be bullshit my entire life. I'm 57. And they never got what should have come around to them. Karma is a self-soothing concept. A way to not feel powerless. Out of sight. Out of mind. Ever lost track of a spider? Lightning never strikes the same place twice. The early bird gets the worm. No. The early bird gets stuck waiting in line with everyone else who decided to be the early bird as well. Early worm gets eaten and the second mouse gets the cheese. Black cats bring bad luck. Yeah, they're just adorable little fluff balls that want love too. Rules are meant to be broken. They were made for literally the opposite. What is the worst thing that a person can put on their bio on a dating app? No face pic until I know you don't know my husband or wife. I've seen this multiple times. Alternative bio, I'm either cheating or trying to cheat. Entertain me. No. If you want to see someone jump through unnecessary hoops to impress you, the circus isn't always an option. A list of 10 plus requirements for a partner while they themselves don't even have their <laughs> together. Looking to lick feet. Saw that one time. Gotta appreciate the upfrontness, I suppose. States what they're seeking. No bullshit. Wish more people were like that, TBH. The part where you insult people by rambling off a list of who must swipe left or face your wrath. Swipe left. Move along. Anytime I see those, I just swipe left anyway, even if I don't meet the criteria. It's just a, it's such a pretentious way to filter people. I mean, the only one I have like that on my Tinder bio is no Republicans or anti-vaxxers. I mean, same thing. I'm a good guy. No, you're not. You're not a good guy. Literally anything I put on mine, apparently, I can't even get a bite from a bot. Hey, BB, you're hot. Message me for pics or to video chat. Free live shows at this is not a bot. I'm a real girl. Dot I got unmatched by a bot. Still considering it one of my greatest achievements. What is a fun fact about yourself? <clears throat> fun fact about me, personally, is that I'm in the process of creating a uh, fake Pokemon region from scratch. With over like 120 or so drafted up Pokemon um, that I'm commissioning artists to make and then I have like the whole story and like a whole map and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, but let's see what these guys have to say. I can write cursive backwards and can write with both hands. I'm sure I can print backwards as well, but that's too easy. Jumped off a moving train on a dare when I was eight. I did the same, but I was 23. Very stupid idea. Friend of mine did that in high school. Slipped. Train cut his leg off way above the knee. Ugh. I got an exorcism a few months ago. I have cheated death twice. The first time I was in a really bad car accident, bled out and died on scene. Still managed to come back five minutes later. This incident actually made me smarter than I was before due to brain damage. The second time, I got shot in the chest with a mortar on July 4th this year. I miraculously walked away without any damages to my body. What a rush. I got eye surgery
surgery because I was seeing double, went well, and now I see better. So now you see triple. I once visited Paris as a tourist and cried walking down the street because I was fat. This fact is not fun. Yeah, I could never go to Paris. Won a paper plane contest. I guess the opposition folded. Who is the biggest piece of on the earth in your opinion? My coworker, who was always quick to take credit for other people's work. And when confronted, talks about how he grew up in poverty and needs every advantage he can to make it in this world. He didn't grow up poor. His family had several maids. Whoever the f invented pop-up ads. There is no competition on earth with more qualified candidates. Rupert Murdoch. My buddy Eric. Elephant shit, probably. That kid that climbed in the Cincinnati Zoo enclosure and got Harambe killed. Look, don't blame the kid. If anything, blame the parents for not watching the kid. Kids will be kids. What ruins a movie? Oh, uh, when Chris Pratt is in it. <clears throat> when actors take a sip of their drink. Why do they all suck at it and make it look so bad? Loud ass explosions and quiet ass dialogue. Music louder than the dialogue too. Twist villains. Basically revealing that the bad guy in the last 10-15 minutes of the movie. Disney has gotten really bad with this. Unnecessary love interests when the plot has nothing to do with romance. Like I walked in to watch an action movie. I don't need a new character introduced halfway through just to give the character a girlfriend. Useless sex scenes unless it is something the story could revolve around. It's a totally a drop for me. Same with unnecessary naked girl in 99% of horror movies. I thought I was becoming a prude until I realized that I'm sitting there waiting for the story to start again. No one is dying although everyone is shooting fight scenes where I can barely tell what I'm looking at. What song is instantly recognizable by the first few words? It's Ben. <clears throat> you are my fire. Just a small town girl. Is this the real life? Hello darkness, my old friend. Ooka chaka, ooka 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 chaka. Oh, what is love? I'm a Bobby girl. I don't know this one. Two, <clears throat> two trailer park girls. I don't know the, I don't know the song. Crazy. First note of Mr. Brightside is immediately recognizable. Brag a little. What is the coolest thing you've done lately? I just passed my driving test and bought my first car. I'm 45 years old. I have a corgi, and when people ask to pet her, I tell them yes, but she doesn't usually like strangers. Then they are overjoyed when it turns out the dog loves them. Truth is, the dog loves everyone. My little cousin tried to shoot me with Nerf guns. I caught three and dodged the rest. I got one of the hottest girls I know's number. First time I got a girl's number. Saved a guy on his bike who was standing in the blind spot of a big truck. Truck was waiting in front of a traffic light to turn right. Bike was standing near passenger side. I ran in front of the truck, waving my hands. Truck stopped. Bike guy saved. Little hero feeling for the rest of the day. Hey, good on you, man. Tackle the guy who robbed a woman at gunpoint. What is the biggest unsolved mystery? Placebo effect. This is a minor miracle and it's insane to me that it's glossed over so easily. You could literally be cured of an illness ailment just by convincing your brain that you took medication for it. AKA our brains and beliefs can literally change our experience of reality fundamentally. How I can consistently be wide awake from 2 to 5 a.m. under perfect sleeping conditions but then fall into a blissful sleep an hour before my alarm goes off for work. How do Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez both resemble Martin Sheen yet look nothing alike? How is my girlfriend simultaneously completely unsure about what she wants to eat. Totally confident that she doesn't want any of my suggestions. Where all my f***ing pens keep disappearing to? Why my two cats fight over the same toy, but there are two of everything in our house for this reason. How moms can pull something out of the fridge that wasn't there when you looked in that exact spot. What does not belong in a swimming pool? Poop. A sinkhole. Nasty ass use band-aids. Hydrophobic people. <laughs> Pikachu. Top 30 worst Pokemon to go swimming with. Number 25 will shock you. Literally. A lawnmower. Soggy bread. Why the f*** do people bring bread to the pool? Because people like bread and are gross and sandwiches. What is the dumbest thing an adult asked you? Seriously. Um, I worked at a grocery store where we had a five cent coupon if you brought in your own bag and this lady asked for the tax off on the coupon as well. What's your email address? S via email. I had to go take a lap around the building to prevent my brain from imploding. What is with you kids being so childish? I hope my kindergarten teacher was joking. My older sister once asked me if cruise control allowed her to take her hands off the wheel. If evolution is true, then how come I don't wake up with antlers on my head? Will these fluorescent bulbs work at night? Of course. Why do you ask? Well, these are all marked daylight and I really want to use the light at night. Do you think you got autism from licking walls coated in lead paint? Are you Scottish or British? Yes, and British. Which dead singer would have the greatest farewell tour if we were able to resurrect them for one last ride? Freddie Mercury would be legendary. I didn't even finish reading the question before thinking Freddie Mercury and it seems like the universe is in agreement on that too. Freddie Mercury. Freddie. Freddie Mercury. Freddie M for the win. Freddie Mercury. Bob Marley. We could use some good vibes. Michael Jackson. Sadly, this is what killed him. Sorry, but Tupac would give a motherfucking show tour all around the world and it would be insane. What would you name your pet frog if you got one? Uh, <laughs> the name's Pond. James Pond. Throg. Kermit. I think Jerome. Pepe. Moisty Toast. Soggy Bread. Ribbit Downey Jr. What's something you own a ridiculous amount of? Problems in every shape and color. Lego. Every relative gets me them for my birthday and Christmas. My first word problem is I have sets I haven't even opened yet. Condoms. I never get to use them. Notebooks that I'll never use and pens that no longer work. Hair all over the body. Mental illnesses. Gotta catch them all, am I right? Cables. There is an unspoken universal law. You will need a cable within a month if you throw it away. What is something you should never bring on a first date?
date. Duct tape. My other girlfriends. Table for four, please. This guy's got three girlfriends? I can't even get one. Your ex-boyfriend. Well, she didn't bring him along. However, we went on her suggestion to the restaurant that he works at. That was a tad awkward. Expectations. Your Pokemon cards. A magic wand and a chessboard. Your other personality. What family tradition ends with you? Children. I don't want children. I don't like them that much. 200 years of living in London. My kids will never be able to afford to rent or buy here. Having kids. I think that's just an end of the family. We conduct a barefoot run around the house at Christmas time and the finisher's order determines the order in which we receive presents. Even though there are 20 of us, it was great when there were only six of us. I mean, the family ends with me, so I guess all of them. Haha, <laughs> same. Shitty childhoods. Santa. He's not getting any more credit for my hard work. Video killed the radio star. What did the internet kill? Social skills. Privacy. Friendly conversation. Critical thinking. My faith in humanity. MTV. Or at least the kind that played actual music videos. The video star. Duh. Blockbuster. Brain cells. Brain cells. Human decency. What's the worst answer you wrote to a question you didn't know on an exam? It was a geography test. And the question was, why is it always raining in a certain area? My answer was, because the clouds are sad. I drew a sad cloud crying for visual support. I know a guy who took one look at tests, got up, put a $20 bill on the teacher's desk with an unfinished test, then proceeded to leave. He works at a car wash now. I wish I studied for this one. I couldn't figure out how to end an essay one time, so I just ended it with, that's the way it is. The teacher was not happy. Told me I wasn't Walter Cronkite. Drew a large bear over the question and at the bottom wrote, cannot answer because there is a bear in the way. You're a genius. That's very clever. 42. I remember there was a gigantic math equation once and it was the hardest question on the test and we were given a ton of space for the answer. I wrote, bruh, as my answer. Everyone in class got that question wrong, by the way, so I felt like my answer was the most sensible. What's the most useless piece of advice you can give? If you ever drop your keys in lava, forget them, because man, they're gone. Jack Handy. You can't fail if you don't try. Get good. I disagree. When I was a kid, I knew someone who was complaining, so I told them to get good. That kid is Elon Musk. Never pet a flaming cat. Just tilt your head back and let the meat slide down your throat hole. What the hell? <laughs> what? I see your mom passed down her party tricks. If your head ever gets like a bitten by a shark, remember, do not put a tourniquet on your neck. You will hang yourself. Tip. Breathe air, not water. Air provides oxygen. Water does not. I don't know if I believe you if I'm honest. Just be happy. Wow, no one has ever thought of that. You can have any superpower you want. Which one do you choose? Teleportation. This is the one I want the most. Other people can be God and whatnot. I just want to instantly be anywhere I want to be. To reach into any picture or pause video and pull out or deposit an item within. Imagine watching, say, the Tri Channel and stealing lunch from them, then reloading the video when you get hungry. Being able to have my soul leave my body. I can go see others' dreams or go wherever I want without being seen. Just to read minds. Telling people what they want to hear if possible, or knowing they're thought to have it ready to make a counter argument or something would make life a breeze. I always thought reading mine would be a burden. I don't want to hear something I didn't want to hear. Yeah, but every superpower has that drawback, but the good parts are worth it. Just to be superhuman. This includes everything from super speed, super strength, super senses, basically everything basic. What would be the most inconvenient, annoying thing to fill a pinata with? 100% glitter. Mayonnaise. My thoughts exactly. Existential dread. Baked beans. Sulfuric acid. Thumbtacks and cockroaches. Bees. Hornets and fiberglass. What's the polite way to tell a customer their card declined? I didn't know getting a card declined was embarrassing. Declined. They told me to cut the card up too. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. There is way too much money on this card. Our system can't handle it. Got any cash? You broke bitch. Yo, this don't work. <laughs> You are given a phone and are told that the next text it sends will send a message to every phone on the planet. What do you text? December 23rd, 2025. Ah, the classic, keep them scared. Worldwide, 50-50 raffle. Venmo, my Venmo, $2 for a ticket. Easy money. While it wouldn't work on everyone, you'd, they, you'd get a good amount of money from that. Five minutes remaining. Man, people really just want to scare the entire world, huh? One person has escaped the simulation. 7.3 billion left. Difficulty increased. Good luck. Your time is limited. The purge has now started. All crime will be legal for the next 24 hours. Tomorrow night at 12 a.m. Be ready. I'm just gonna rickroll the world. So simple yet so effective. Americans, what's something Europeans need to hear? Free, clean, omnipresent public restrooms are indeed possible. Do we do that? I have never been to a clean public restroom. It's past time you take James Corden back. Please Please, for the love of God, get rid of him. Europe is getting fat too. While us Americans might have the most greasy, disgusting food possible, uh, everywhere else can still eat too much, you know? I don't really know why we would say that to Europeans, but okay. Putting corn on pizza doesn't make it American pizza. It just makes it disgusting. 
it doesn't sound like the grossest thing, but it's not really American. A good looking guy smoking a cigarette is not a movie. Might not be a movie, but it sure is film. Putting ice in drinks and giving people free tap water are about to make a lot more sense as Europe gets warmer. Don't be a dick about it, please. What genuinely still makes you as happy as it did when you were a kid? Hard question, I don't have an answer. Riding a bicycle still feels like freedom. It's the next best thing to being able to fly. I haven't ridden a bike in so long. I should probably get on that. The bike, I mean. Licking the mixing spoon of some brownies or cake batter. I'd say that's kind of a universal euphoric moment for a lot of people. Unless you really don't like sweets, then oops. Anytime I drive past a field of cows or horses, I'll proclaim it. Cows! Or horses! Childish, maybe, but they are very nice animals, I always thought. The smell of cinnamon and oranges. Mm. That sound was the smile. <laughs> Christmas. Love me some Christmas. I've still never experienced a white Christmas, and I feel like I'm being robbed. When pizza is for dinner. Okay, but pizza nights are, like, the best dinner nights, right? Like, adult child, who cares? It's great. Finding a coin on the ground. If it's tail side up, don't you dare pick that up. What's something you can't believe you had to explain to a grown adult? That Australia isn't a part of the UK. How can you get to be a grown adult and not know? that Australia is fake. It's made up. No, my snake won't turn into two if you cut him in half. What did they think? A snake was like a starfish or worms? Not me, but my husband. Had to tell his best friend why jumping around in the woods with some deer antlers he had found on his head was a bad idea. They were hunting. I had to explain that bats were a real animal and not a mythical made-up creature after telling an ex-girlfriend that I saw one flying above us and she thought I was insane. That rabbits do not hatch from eggs for Easter like you see on commercials. I have rabbits that I bring places with me, and a co-worker asked how big the eggs were. I had to explain that to an adult. My son has a big plastic egg, so as a joke, I put a baby rabbit in it and showed him. That the noise flies make come from their wings, not their mouths. I love the idea that flies are flying around screaming, <coughs> as they do. Either way, they, those things need to put a silencer on there because goddamn, you come near my ear and then I freak out. What's a dumb thing to say while being held at gunpoint? Oh, don't stab me. <laughs> Yo, the safety's still on. Is that real? What are you gonna do? Shoot me? You're holding it wrong. Here, here, let me show you. Giving off major Hermione vibes right now. Not gonna lie, still read that as Hermione the first time. I bet you can't shoot me three times in the center of my chest before I grab that. Come and will Hermes says, what? Ah, gotcha. You can't hurt me now. Uh, if you shoot me, your penis is small. Okay, Reddit. What's the weirdest thing you did as a child? I'm ready to see some awful things. Once I graduated kindergarten, I used to pathologically avoid my former teachers like the devil. Probably even to the point of rudeness. This was in a smallish town, so not impossible. The reason for this behavior was that I really wanted one of them to say the phrase, long time no see. And I felt that to get one of them to say it, I needed to sort of save up the time that they hadn't seen me for a really long time. I don't know why I thought the phrase long time no see was so cool, but that's what I thought it was. Cool. Probably too much American TV, but I digress. I took a sh on the lawn because I wanted to be like my dog, and now you go to jail. You're in jail now. I used to eat tulip stems. My mom would get so mad because I would eat all her flowers. Didn't have to worry about rabbits, just me. I would also eat chapstick. Not sure why. I ate dog biscuits. I seem to recall quite liking them. I, I have a confession. I ate dog treats when I was younger because they did taste okay. I used to lay on my bed and put my feet on the wall telling stories to myself and pretending like they were puppets. I peed on a chicken because it pooped on me the day before. Eh, it's just classic revenge. So I was holding a really big fart. The bully barged in trying to find a new victim. I taunted him. He came for me and I farted right into his face. Look, if you didn't do it, he was going to do it too. I tried to chop up my Fruit Loops with a mirror. I got the idea from Metallica's Master of Puppets. One of the verses says, chop your breakfast on a mirror. Sounded like a good idea to me. Oh no, buddy. What's a great answer to the question, what's your biggest weakness? Being uncooperative. And when they ask for an example, just say no. LMAO. Just say, my bladder with a lopsided grin and an ever increasing wet patch growing in the crotch area. Ew. Don't have the strength to tell you. Big golf girls. Yeah, you and 
everybody else has that weakness. Definitely the crotch area. If I get hit there, then I'm down for a good minute at least. My excessive number of strengths intimidates those around me. I have a hard time dealing with stupid questions. What's an unusual body feature of yours? I have a body mole in my eye, like inside of it and near the pupil. Me too, apparently. Eye doctor said to keep an eye on it, lol. But I'm like, how? I mean, it would be a pretty bad situation if there wasn't an eye on it. I developed arthritis at 16 years old. Also, I have a massive a for a dude. Double cheeked up. Nice misdirect there. Wasn't expecting the a Ever since my brain surgery to remove a tumor, I can't feel any temperature. Is this all over or located in one area? Mostly all over torso, arms, and head. Can't even feel my face, so it's hard to shave. Sounds like they forgot to plug something back in. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Just turn everything off and then turn it back on. My belly button is significantly off-center. I have two different ears. One is wide enough for earbuds, the other isn't. My twin brother has the mismatch on the opposite side. Sounds like you guys traded an ear in the womb. You're gonna owe me a kidney later. This is what I tell my twin. Spare parts. One of my ribs is not connected to my spine. Is that what they call a true floating rib? I believe it's called a spare rib. I have a bifurcated uvula, that teardrop thing in the back of your throat. Mine is shaped like a butt or a little nutsack. Throat scroat. I think we finally found a new evolution. It used to be throat goat. Now it is throat scroat. Two uteruses and two cervixes, aka uterus didelphi. Same. And doctors didn't know until my first C-section. I have two kids and one came from the right and the other came from the left. I call it the duplex. What series you can re-watch again and again? Currently, I've been re-watching episodes of What We Do in the Shadows and I think this is a modern classic. Does the show live up to the goodness of the movie? I've honestly seen quite a bit of praise for it but not looked into it myself yet. Surpasses, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. The show is great. Like, de I would definitely recommend checking that out. It's one of my new favorites. Malcolm in the Middle. Edit. Holy crap, this is a lot of upvotes. My cousin threw this on in the background during a visit with family, and every new episode that came on, I said the same thing. This is the greatest episode. There is no such thing as a bad Malcolm in the Middle episode. I recently binged the entire series, and oh my god, it is such a gem. Season 3 to 9 of The Simpsons, and season 1 to 3 of SpongeBob. Seasons 3 to 9 are a religion in Argentina. You can have an entire conversation using only Simpsons quotes. Futurama. I've Pavloved myself into only being able to fall asleep if a Futurama episode is on. Same. My nightly ritual is a couple episodes of Futurama, then set the sleep timer for an hour. Arrested Development, but only the original run. The show is a work of art, and the newer seasons could never measure up to one to three. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Kitten Mittens will forever be the GOAT intro to any episode of any show ever. What are some myths that people still believe? That bubblegum stays in your body for seven years if you swallow it. it. It doesn't. It Guys, come on. It's actually 17 years. My dad had this guy helping him out. Think big box store DIY curb ready helper who told him if you sleep with your hair wet, you will bleed out of your mouth. And he was 100% sure that was a fact. We were both just confused and bewildered at this statement. What the hell had this guy witnessed? His mom was sick of wet pillows that m and made that up. Lie detectors is a literal thing. There's a reason they aren't dismissible as evidence in court in most places. You have to wait 48 hours to report someone missing. People are saying 48 hours now? Good lord. No, do it immediately, guys. Come on. My mom always tells me to never mix milk and fish since that would poison me. Same goes to sleeping with socks in bed. It makes people blind, according to her. I still believe that if any of my limbs hang off the bed while sleeping, that a monster will grab them. Also believe that the moment I remember this and pull them back on the bed is just in the nick of time before a monster grabs them. You can't prove that there isn't a monster under my bed. For far too long, I sincerely believed that if you eat an apple seed, a tree may begin to grow inside of you. That you should pee on a jellyfish sting for relief. Please don't do that. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Yes, it does. That's the entire reason for lightning rods on buildings. Diamonds being rare gems. That you must wait at least 30 minutes after eating before going swimming. Otherwise, you could develop deadly cramps that lead to drowning. This was made to keep kids from throwing up in pools. I'd bet money on it. Or to give the parents a break to finish their meals before going back to full supervision mode. The one about you're supposed to buy an engagement ring worth three months of your pays. Idiots still falling for a PR ad campaign from the 1920s, or maybe it was the 30s. Doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. You can make one thing 
percent bigger. What do you choose? <laughs> hey, I, I think I think we all know the answer for some of us. <laughs> well, I was born with one arm shorter than the other, so naturally I'd wish for a bigger. D <laughs> there it is. Everyone's patience. The X button in mobile ads. My parents' lifespan. My love for myself. It's lacking, and I could use the boost. You're doing great, dude man. Last name. The density of hair on my noggin. The earth. Just to see what happens. Suddenly, more earth. It's free real estate. The right foot on everyone in the world. Not everyone would notice, but it would mess with the minds of those that did just enough. Population count of endangered species. Monkey's paw. 5% more animals are added to the endangered species list. Monkey's paw, but helpful. All those are mosquito species. You know what? Let's make the sun 5% bigger. I want to see what happens. Instant death. Huh. Neat. Hey, I'm ready. I've lived a good life, all right? The amount of good in everyone. My salary. Antarctica. Cool everything the f*** down. What is the biggest scam in today's society? Ticketmaster charging a $30 processing fee for a $50 ticket. Textbook access codes you get after buying a new textbook and it can only use once. Insider trading in Congress. Fitness advice by influencers whose only goal is peddling their products. Working 9 to 5 Monday through Friday and still being broke. Um, you just actually just need to stop spending so much money, you stupid millennial. Uh, maybe you stop buying so much avocado toast and maybe you'll be able to buy a house in 25 years. <laughs> it's easy as that. Just stop spending so much money. Capital some bullshit. <laughs> Needing a degree for an entry level low paying job. Annual raises are lower than annual inflation. 10 hot dogs, 8 buns. What's something you did as a teenager that you look back on and think, holy f***, that was f***ing stupid. Walking from Virginia to Maryland over the frozen Potomac River on my sophomore year in high school. I got about halfway out and laid down in the ice so that I could see along the bottom of the river. It wasn't until several years later that I heard on the news that the Potomac never freezes over enough for people to walk on it. Ooh, sounds like you got pretty lucky. Post constant, nonsensical updates to my Facebook wall. Well, what teenager didn't? I thought that, if I acted angsty and pushed people away from me, I'd make people want to know more about me and why I was so distant. For any current teenagers who didn't already know, this doesn't work. People will just let you be alone and go find someone who's more friendly to them being around. At the age of 15 slash 16-ish, I traveled to England by myself to meet an internet stranger slash lover. OMG, we need the full story. How did you pull that off? I had been babysitting for a while. Money wasn't an issue. I told my parents I was staying with the friend's cousin. I actually maintained a relationship with this person for over two years, so my parents did eventually meet them, but they never learned who I was really visiting that time. Stayed at a shitty job for years because of no reason at all. I woke up and went to bed every day hating the job and wishing I didn't have it. This was during a time when part-time jobs like mine were not hard to find. I could have moved on to something else anytime I wanted. I know this because once I finally did decide to look for something else, I found it within days. I still look back on it and wonder why I spent the last of my teen years hating life because of a job that I only had for extra pocket money. It taught me that it's really easy to get used to something shitty and to not let something like that happen again. Roll down a hill inside the center of a giant cable spool the telephone company had left behind. I was fine, but could have easily fallen out and broken my spine. Oh, I can hear the Mario slide music right now. Tried to be popular? Unfortunately, I don't think being popular is something you can really try to do. Texting with complete strangers and giving them too much information about myself. Dude, I already told you my social security number. Now you want my mom's maiden name? Well, anyways, it's Neon Lime Green Skinny Jeans. This one feels like just a randomly generated sentence. Socially skilled people of Reddit, what are your go-to topics when a conversation goes awkwardly quiet? Ask about their hobbies or talk about your own. I realized I was talking to the love of my life and she asked about my love of Factorio and production games. Not only I could talk about it for what felt hours, she kept engaging with it and now she has her own Factorio factory. Ford. Family. Occupation. Recreation. Dreams. I guess that's a pretty good baseline to follow. Something I haven't seen is to be a good listener. Conversation often goes quiet because you really haven't listened to the person so things just kind of die off. While the other person is talking, actually listen to what they say. Don't plan your response while they're talking. I've found when I act actively listen that conversations rarely just get awkwardly silent. Anyone up to date on Great British Bake Off? Oh sh Oh man, yeah? My top three is Maxi, Yanush, and Sandro. What about you? I will simply add that silence is awkward only if you make it so. Learn to be comfortable with pauses. Take a sip of your drink. Look at your surroundings and the person you're talking to. You don't need to fill a void. Confidence comes from within. Socially skilled people of Reddit? You're kidding, right? Politics. Always bring up politics. Also, how much everyone makes. And religion, too. People love to talk about the 
way their favorite god wishes you to live your life. Eh, that's a dangerous one, but it is a conversation starter. What do you value more than money? Oh, for me, it's my dog. He's just, he's such a sweet little guy. Time, obviously. If I had infinite time, that would be epic. Health. Unfortunately, in America, uh, your money is directly tied to your health. Free time. My inner peace. Non-negotiable. My wife. I also choose this guy's wife. Human connection and time with people. You must have been losing it during the pandy then, huh? My cat. Which pizza is the best pizza? Surprise pizza. Come home from a long day at work and see they ordered pizza. Oh boy! Free pizza. You really can't go wrong when it's free. Personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut in 1996 that was free because I read some books. Margarita pizza. Oh, unfortunately, you're wrong. Wood-fired pizza. I really can't say if I've eaten much wood-fire pizza, so no comment. Detroit. I love thick and crunchy crust. Pepperoni. You can't beat the classics. Pineapple. I'll die on that hill. You and me both, buddy. But if you don't like that, then you can send me DMs that I will not look at. Breakfast pizza. I don't think I've ever had that, but it, I guess it could be good? I don't know. Chicago-style meat lovers. Gonna be honest here, not a big fan of Chicago-style. Not sure what it is. What in weddings makes you cringe? Guests who take pictures of the ceremony with a fucking iPad. Releasing of doves into the sky. At my wedding, I will release rats into the crowd. I recently went to a wedding where the bride and groom had signs and decor with it was always you everywhere. When the bride and groom met, the bride was one of three women the groom was dating. They spent a decade cheating on all of their partners to be with each other before they finally got together. But I guess that was all okay because it was always you. What a weird thing to highlight with your decorations at your wedding. When someone else proposes to their significant other, like, why take all the attention from the bride and groom and put it on yourself instead? It's so selfish. They're just trying to save money, you know? They can get their own ceremony going at that current wedding. When the groom goes up the bride's skirt in front of all their family, it's so extremely weird and out of place to me. Like, why would you want to do that in front of your parents and grandparents? I really don't get why that's even a tradition. When you overhear an exchanging of words and nobody's ever heard of closing the goddamn door. No, it's much better to face these kinds of things with a sense of poise and rationality. If you didn't pick up on that cute little reference, I think that was Fallout Boy. Any wedding where the bridesmaids and groomsmen have been ordered to perform a choreographed dance at any point during the festivities, whether that's dancing up the aisle or a full-on dance number during the reception. Smashing the slice of cake in each other's face. Oh, it's so cute how you got my face all dirty and now we're wasting the food. Aww. Ball and chain jokes. Why TF are you getting married then? I'll never understand straight people in that regard. Like, you just hate your significant other, so why did you do this? So many Ed Sheeran songs. I'm really glad I haven't been to a wedding in a long time. What seems fun, but was actually not fun the first time you did it? Being adult, because I can do whatever I want. Now in my 30s, I wake up and work, pay bills and taxes while fight off crippling depression. Going to a big theme park. I spent hours standing in line getting sunburned for some three to four minute rides. My feet and legs were so sore from standing in one place for that long. And everything was ridiculously expensive. And there were screaming children everywhere. I honestly just wanted to go home after a couple rides. Sleeping on a trampoline as a kid. Oh, I always wanted to do that, but I guess it is kind of uncomfortable since your body's like bent. All little kids want to mow the lawn when they watch their dad do it. Once they do it, they realize that it actually sucks. Last time I mowed the lawn, I think I was blind for two days because of just like the grains and allergies kicking in, sitting close to the screen in a movie theater. I was front row for the Truman Show. It was amazing. Every other time was miserable, but Truman Show was somehow different. Clubbing. Fucking terrible. I don't know how people have the energy. It's, it's just stressful. Receiving mail. Always looked forward to receiving mail when I was a kid. As an adult, not so much. Because most of the time it's just bills or advertisements, so it's really annoying. Snow skiing. The first time is miserable. That's why I stay shredding on my board, baby. What is a horror movie yet to be made? Aliens abduct a human, but the human is actually a psychopathic serial killer and is now loose on their ship, hunting them down. Jason X was almost that, but not quite. What a special movie. I think the scariest movie that seemingly nobody has made would be about the things we imagine in the dark. Somebody behind you when you turn off the lights at the top of the stairs, walking by a bedroom or closet, and somebody is there 
snare type thing. I hate coming up from the basement in the night or even walking by the den just to make sure nobody is standing there. A movie like that would actually f*** me up. This is exactly what scared me so much about the Babadook. His silhouette reminds me of being little and frightened of a coat rack in the dark because his somewhat resembled a person. There's a scene at a police station that actually has a coat rack that kind of looks like the Babadook and the main character is spooked by it. Desperate screenwriters trawling Reddit for horror movie ideas. So long as it isn't full-blown plagiarism, if they're just getting ideas and then they expand on it, go for it. Don't know why, but I feel like Jennifer Aniston playing a sadistic murderer would be good because you wouldn't want to believe it. In that scenario, I guess it would have to be like some sort of reveal that she's the murderer. A movie filled to the brim with tension and dark atmosphere where every jump scare is a cat and there's actually nothing happening. Just someone with an overactive imagination who keeps getting scared by their cat. Coming to screens near you. Generalized anxiety disorder. The movie. I don't buy into this mentality in real life, but always thought it would make an intriguing story. A protagonist in a large city is terrified that people are looking at and stalking them. In the beginning, it seems that the protagonist is just paranoid and mistaken. But as the story progresses, the audience slowly realizes that the protagonist is completely correct. It could explore themes of social anxiety, paranoia, antisocial behavior, modernity, and more. Sounds like the Truman Show. Black Mirror did something similar to this in the episode White Bear. If the Truman Show was only following Truman's perspective, not like seeing the outside world, I think it would be a really good horror movie. High School the Musical 4. Oh god, no, not this! A poo that resents you for parting with it that takes its way through the sewers to find you and kill you. While I do really like that, I don't know how marketable that would be. What was a lesson you learned too late? Do not get multiple credit cards. Don't do it, it's a bad idea. Sometimes you have to initiate. You can't just wait around for people to come to you. That people won't do the same f***ing thing you did for them, however life-saving it was. Take care of your teeth. I'm trying, okay? It is important to think critically and deeply about who the person you're in love with actually is. Not be caught up in who they appear to be. But at the same time, don't overthink too hard where you imagine a fake personality onto them because, oh, believe me, I've done that. If your date is an asshole to random people, it's only a matter of time before they treat you like that as well. Find happiness that doesn't rely on others. <laughs> Easier said than done. You can't satisfy everyone. Oh yeah? Watch me. If you never take chances, you'll be full of regrets. Problems do not go away if you ignore them long enough. In some circumstances, they get worse, actually. What would you do if you woke up with telekinesis? See if I can make myself fly. That's the, probably the first thing. I'm sick of driving. Not tell anyone. Then you can pull little, little pranks on people. Hee hee hee. Immediately set about testing and developing my powers privately. How fine control do I have? Can I type with it and tie my shoes? What's the weight limit? Can I move a couch? Throw a car? Can I fly? How long can I maintain something? If someone gets all road ragey, can I just make their car pull over and hover a half inch above the shoulder for half an hour? Can I move people? Can I punch things? I'd keep it a secret as long as possible until I figure out exactly what my capabilities are. Then go watch Chronicle for more ideas. Andrew! Andrew, come on, man. Come on, Andrew. Dress up as Darth Vader and tell people I find their lack of faith disturbing. Embrace my username. Tell it Don it. Okay, I see what you mean. Clearly the answer is hands-free No? Does that mean you could do it with, like, clothes on? Because, whoa. Probably hit snooze without moving. Be careful not to just shatter your phone or alarm clock, though. What's the worst type of music? All right, everyone, let's remember. Music is subjective. That fucking alarm alarm clock. Especially apples. Every time I hear it out of context, I get a mini panic attack. Oh, you mean this one? The music you don't like. This is the only reply that makes sense, TBH. Anything you hear being blasted on public transport or hiking. Please don't use Bluetooth speakers when you're going hiking. I know it's fun with your friends, but it's also noise pollution and kind of scaring the animals away from their zones. TikTokers that release a breakup song and go, did I just release the song of the summer? No, no, you did not. But unfortunately, the algorithm is going to force me to hear it 40 times. Corporate advertising music with ukulele and whistling. Oh, you mean every Kickstarter since 2010? That one U2 album that got randomly downloaded on my phone years ago. They will never live this down, and I fully support that. To be fair, it wasn't U2 that put the album on everyone's phone. U2 just wanted to make the album free in iTunes. It was Apple's decision to force it onto everyone's devices. Would you say 
they did it pro bono? Oh my god, whatever. The music used in 99% of TikToks. Country designed to appeal to too many people. Mainstream pop rap is quite annoying. Pop rap? I, I don't know if I have an exact example in mind. Mumble rap or music played at gyms? Whatever's currently in the charts. Oh, so you just don't like new music? Got it. Time to sort by controversial. Whatever genre Imagine Dragons is. The rock. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty close. Older people of Reddit who grew up without a phone. How did you spend your free time in your 20s? Drove around aimlessly, hung out at coffee shops, went to movies and concerts, walked around parks in the mall, played video games, went to diners with friends, played card and board games, sat out in the dark and watched falling stars. Don't worry, these things aren't lost to time. All you have to do is go outside and put the phone down and you can do these things too. Ever wonder why so many old folks sit in front of the TV so much? And before the TV, they'd sit around the radio. The people on public transport couldn't bury their heads in cell phones, so everyone buried their heads in newspapers. Distracting ourselves with media is kind of timeless. Before I got married and had kids in my mid-twenties, I spent time with friends. Game nights, bars, playing pool, other social events. I had a very busy social and dating life. High school had landlines and walking around the mall eating in the foot court and a movie. Twenties were landlines, drinks, darts, and pool. The true difference was there was something to talk about because without Insta communication, you had to tell your buddies or actually face-to-face -face flirt with the opposite sex. Biggest advantage was if you did it well, it led to pretty much immediate physical contact, hand-holding, kissing, etc. Reading, television, hanging out with friends, bike riding. I went to a lot more movies and I have to admit, my house was a lot cleaner with no fear of being recorded and it ending up on YouTube. This sounds like a very Karen worry out in the world, though. So I'm not saying that they are, it's just the vibe I'm getting. 50 years old. So I was in my 20s during the 90s. All free time was spent skateboarding, playing punk music, or drinking slash getting laid. Didn't own a TV till my 30s. I don't know why I gave you, <laughs> like, southern accent, sorry. Nintendo 64. That sounds like what I would have been up to. What do you do after you first wake up? Hit snooze and go right back to sleep. Roll around in bed for 30 minutes and then join my morning Zoom meeting just in the nick of time. Try to go back to sleep? Do you really have to try at that point? Drink water. Sorry not everyone can be like you. Step one, denial. Step two, bargaining. Three, anger. Four, depression. Five, acceptance. I never get to five. It's, it's too much work. Rub my balls. I too rub this guy's balls. How does it feel to be living my dream? Literally fart. A big one. Okay. <laughs> I guess. And so I wake up in the morning and one, step outside and two, I take a deep breath and three, I get real high, and four, I scream from the top of my lungs, what's going on? Sit on the side of the bed, chug some cold water, and cry. The Halloween season is upon us. What horror film do you recommend? I said Barbarian a while ago, so this one is gonna be It Follows. That movie just like gets under my skin. It's so creepy. The Shining. All right, for the time, yeah, it probably was scary. To me, no. Shaun of the Dead, my first R-rated movie. Ooh, solid pick. The Thing is mandatory watching for me around Halloween. Absolutely. Number one classic, and if you like Among Us, that's where they got the idea. Original Halloween. We watch it every Halloween. Rosemary's Baby, 1968, is an absolutely stunning horror movie. It's even pretty light on jump scares and gore if you're squeamish. Despite that, it's creepy as hell and even quite profound. That said, it's not exactly Halloween-y, if you know what I mean. It doesn't have that autumnal, pagan, magical, orange and black quality to it. I'm actually drawing a little blank on movies that really capture the vibe of the season, but the Vivitch would be a decent example. Cabin in the Woods, amazing pick, and it's mostly a comedy that kind of just picks apart the tropes of horror movies. The Exorcist, it's every bit as disturbing as it was when it came out. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, in fact, go ahead and watch The Witch's Ghost and The Cyber Chase to complete the holy trio. The modern remake of Zombie Island is trash. The original original is f***ing lit. Not exactly horror, but Coraline. Always Coraline. The other mother 
Killer still freaks me out to this day, even though, like, I'm, you know, a 23-year-old man. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Still haven't watched this one. It's not because I don't like clowns or anything. I just, I don't know. Who is the best example of you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain? Fritz Haber. He discovered a way to synthesize ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gas, which is crucial for fertilizers. He was also later employed by Germany during World War I to find a way to weaponize chlorine, thus becoming the father of chemical warfare after successfully doing so. Basically, he saved billions and killed millions. My dad. He was always against the HOA in our neighborhood. Long story short, he wrote an apparently strong-worded letter about all the changes he would make, rules he would enforce, etc. There happened to be a vacancy up for grabs, and he ended up as the president. Now he walks around the neighborhood b***ing about everyone else's yards. A whole load of these examples prove that it's not you become the villain, it's that eventually your secret villainy gets found out. Kevin Spacey would have gone down as an acting legend. Still can't believe he really just tried saying, oh no, it's okay, I'm gay, so that's why it's alright. Like, come on, man. Chrome vs. Explorer. People forgot, but Chrome was once viewed as the heroic frontier market breakers. I just hope Firefox will die a hero. Mm. Facebook. When it first came about, it was seen as a safe social media because you had to have a student ID to make an account. It was for high school and college students only. Parents slash adults at the time were worried about their kids having contact with adult predators on MySpace following many horror stories from AIM and MySpace interactions. Now it's a show of adults posting 24-7 and kids lying about their age to get an account. Data mining users, normalization of sharing personal data, and the company not giving a shit about online safety. The biggest crime is that the social network almost tries to phrase it that Zuckerberg is like a sympathetic character when no, 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 no. Jared from Subway. Absolutely disgusting human being. He deserves more than just 15 years. OJ Simpson. The craziest thing is that that man jokes about it now. Married people have read it What's something you wish unmarried people knew? Being married shouldn't take away from having a good relationship with yourself. It's okay to use two blankets. No one likes to wake up with cold ass cheeks because your spouse stole the blanket. The wedding is just one day and does not fix any issues. It goes back to the exact same relationship afterwards. And if you're lucky, that's a good thing. A gracious, heartfelt apology goes a long way. Common values matter way more than common interests. It's better to stay single forever than to marry the wrong person. In my own own opinion, I think marriage is a scam. Just move in with the person you like, and if things don't work out, oh well, it's not like you have to go to court. Film snobs of Reddit, who was the single worst casting choice in Hollywood film history? John Wayne as Genghis Khan. Who thought that was a good idea? I waited almost 30 years for a Morbius the Living Vampire film, then they cast Leto. <laughs> Oh, uh, James Corden in Cats. James Corden in anything, really. The cast for The Last Airbender. The acting alone was enough to make it the worst movie of that year. I mean, I've seen better acting in Liberty Mutual commercials. Oh, and those are bad. I'm not a film snob, but Jared Leto as the Joker stands out as a WTF choice. I feel so bad for his castmates because he was a literal maniac on set and off set. Steven Seagal as anything, I think. Luckily, he only cast himself in his own movies, so we're safe. Mark Wahlberg in The Happening. I'm not sure any casting choice could have made that movie not suck, but I couldn't believe for even a second that Wahlberg was just a dorky science teacher trying to survive. I'm gonna amend that. I think Mark Wahlberg in uh, the Uncharted movie as Sully? What were they thinking? Valerian with Cara Delevingne. She had no feelings and zero chemistry with the other main character, Dane DeHaan, who I've also never seen in another movie. Worst casting ever. I think Dane does a pretty good job in the other movies he's in. I mean, minus Spider-Man a little bit, but uh, yeah. Kristen Stewart in Snow White and the Huntsman. Oh my God, I forgot about that movie. Pretty much everyone in the Netflix Death Note movie. Oh yeah, what were they thinking? Like Netflix, really? Get it together. What is something ancient that only an internet veteran can remember? Signing the guest book on sites and traffic slash visitor counters. Putting a counter on your own website and refreshing the page a whole bunch of times. I mean, people would do that on Tumblr, so it's not that old. Passworded website chat rooms where the password was in the HTML source, so it was accessible by anybody that could do more than left click. Yahoo was a list of websites, then became a major search engine, then dominated email, maps, message groups, chat, instant messenger, news, dating. Now it barely survives. Browser software on 3.5 inch floppy disks taped to the front of PC magazines. The instant household rage because 
because someone picked up the phone. Good old dial-up, baby. It is now safe to turn off your computer. Slowly watching the image you wanted to see load one line at a time. The hamster dance, according to Miriam Webster. Hamster dance is not that old. Come on now. ASL? For the kids out there that don't know what this means, it means American Sign Language. And that's it. Don't go looking it up. What movie ending is horribly depressing? Seven. Oh, that one's so rough. The ending of American History X hit me pretty hard the first time. Hate is baggage. Bridge to Terabithia. I saw that movie as a kid and rewatched it last year, and again, I cried like a bitch. Hey, you're not a bitch, okay? That movie gets us all. The Fox and the Hound. Oh, oh no, don't, br don't bring those memories back. Memento is a singular movie to me where I thought it was brilliant and I never want to watch it ever again. Requiem for a Dream. My roommate said that that movie messed her up, so I need to watch it soon. Million Dollar Baby. I haven't watched it. I know it's like, what, a boxing movie? I, I don't know. What is something that your profession allows you to do that would otherwise be illegal? I test fire alarm systems, so I pull the pull stations all the time. Lucky? I always wanted to do that in school. I can carry scissors at the airport. Pass through airport security without a boarding pass. So you work at a McDonald's in the airport? I collect and catalog child sexual abuse materials after I break into people's cell phone and computers without their permission. Please tell me you work for the police or something, because otherwise, why are you holding on to it? Sticking my finger in people's is Debt collector? I know they're probably a doctor, but that's still just a weird sentence to say, I think. Touch bottoms of strangers. I mean, that's technically not illegal if you have their permission. Or are you saying you're allowed to touch people's bottoms without permission? Throw mixed chemical substances into a giant firebox without any hazmat suit. Grab strangers and throw them in the air. Russian political henchman? Ballet dancer. Part-time slash guest artist, but it sounds cool. Which celebrities should just go away? Dr. Phil. Ever since I saw him treat the girl that didn't want to see her biological mother like that, I'm convinced he has some sort of god complex and a bit of an asshole. The way the audience cheered on Dr. Phil as he's laying into the girl is really uncomfy. The entire Kardashian clan and whomever they happen to be banging at any given time. Chris Brown. Thankfully, I haven't heard much about him in the past few years, but uh, he should just go away. Nick Cannon. Did he do something bad? I'm kind of out of the loop. Caitlyn Jenner. People forget that she killed someone in 20. 15. Vehicular manslaughter. Killed one and injured seven. She's praised as a hero. It seems this barely even tarnished her reputation. I mean, South Park still kind of clowns her. Any celebrity that's a product pusher and controversial at the same time. We shouldn't be talking about them anymore. Britney Spears. Hear me out. She lived all those years under a team's thumb, but now she's free. She can go do anything she wants to do. Live her life as she sees fit. Unexpectedly wholesome. Leave Britney alone. Kanye West. Do Dude's not okay. He needs mental health help and for the media to stop romanticizing all of the crazy and toxic things he does. Every time I see him pop up with some new antics, I immediately run to the medicine cabinet to double check that I remembered to take my meds the night before. There have actually been a couple times where his goofy ass helped me keep from doing wacky sh myself by accident. I don't care how talented you think Kanye is, he needs to be like institutionalized or something. Especially after his tweets recently, good lord. Jared Leto, 100%. I mean, the dude literally made a cult. I would say Ellen, but her show was not picked up anymore. Since everyone figured out, she does not practice what she preaches. Most talk show hosts, especially James Corden, talk show hosts really just have a god complex because they get to talk to all of the other famous people. What is the weirdest thing someone has told you in confidence? I started a new job, and the lady at the desk next to me was this nice, older Christian lady, and she just sort of told me out of the blue that she had had surgery on her labia to look better because it was ugly. I didn't really know how to respond to that. There is no good response to that. Hmm. I had a neighbor who wanted to buy a wife. He wanted to get surgery to get taller. He went on dates with men, realized he wasn't gay, just lonely. He was on a seven-year dry spell, no sex, finally hits it and ghosts the girl because she was ugly. He ended two female friendships because they didn't ask him out. He got married for tax reasons and his wife left him for a Bernie bro. 
I don't know if I think he's toxic or sad or both. He also went to Yale and is a doctor. Oh my lord, that is a roller coaster for sure. I was in a park once, sitting maybe 10 feet away from a stranger. He asked me what hour it is, and once I told him, he used it as a way to start a small talk. I felt he was weird from the start. Then, word after word, I don't know how we reached the point of him telling me that there is no difference between swallowing your own saliva directly or spitting it out and then swallowing it again, and that he sometimes spits on his food just to prove this theory. At that point, the only thing that came to my mind is to stand and go. Sometimes I think the devs just like to give NPCs some quirky little dialogue. I sold cars. People told me all sorts. The one I remember is the guy that told me he was impotent. Why tell me? I had a guy that had eye cancer show me what was under his patch once as well. That was memorable. He liked to strip Barbie dolls naked, dip them in the bath, and suck the water out of their boobs. This was when we were in the third grade together, and it was the second thing he told me after his name. I mean, at least he knows what he likes? I guess. That they lost a tampon inside themselves weeks earlier, and if I could help them look for it. Did you find it? There's a lot of weird stuff I'm down for, but that is not one of them, LMAO. I told her she needs a doctor ASAP due to the possibility of TSS. They found it, and she was fine. When I was in school, a guy flat out told me that every time he saw me, he wanted to bite me. Not sure what to make of it. That they think Satan has been possessing them every once in a while, and then said that they had main character energy. Oh, they're one of those people. What's your unpopular rock music opinion? You can still enjoy and appreciate songs that aren't life-changing masterpieces. Basing your tastes and personality on what sucks is lame. That applies to every music genre, I think. It's okay to not like certain periods of a band. It doesn't make you less of a fan. Certain rock bands' secret for their it factor is just that they had a jazz drummer. They make decent tracks great and great tracks timeless. People care way too much about what genre a certain band or artist is. I do GAF if a band sells out or not. If I like their songs, I like their songs. Rock and metal can be as bland and soulless as shitty pop music. In fact, a lot of it is. Tattoos and electric guitar don't make you cool if you are singing about your sugar baby butterfly. A lot of gatekeepers in this genre. I went on metal memes for the first time and I learned that I only listen to poser bands. Way too many music snobs in the genre. Some people like Taylor Swift and One Direction. Get over it. Nothing worse than being at a gig and some douche is banging on about how no one here is a real fan who liked them before they were mainstream. Yeah, if everyone here was, you'd be in a tiny crowd and your favorite band probably wouldn't be making music anymore. I'll never understand gatekeeping music. If you like the band, you want them to be big, right? What song takes way too long to get to the good part? Jack Sparrow by The Lonely Island. Now back to the good part. Freebird by Leonard Skinner. It takes like five minutes before they play the best part. The first five minutes aren't too bad either, though. Phil Collins in the air tonight. Skip to three minutes, 15 seconds for the drums to kick in. That new Nickelback song takes three minutes and 53 seconds to get to the good part. Let me guess. That's the that's how long the song is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, come on. Nickelback's not that bad, guys. Come on. Get over yourself. Stop hating because it's popular to hate. Seabat, Hudson Mohawk, Baby Shark. I'm still waiting to find the good bit my daughter laughs at. I think we're all waiting for the good part. Grandpa Shark is the good bit. 2015 was seven years ago. What trends have quietly faded into obscurity since then? This will be a trip down memory lane for me. Iggy Azalea. Yeah, I haven't really heard much from them since then. Selfie sticks. Big trend at concerts, festivals, and weddings, and now we've all just switched back to finding the longest arm. Random internet people becoming popular enough for a short time to guest on Ellen for no real reason. Like Alex from Target. Yeah, Alex from Target, Damn Daniel, all of them. On fleek? Vines? Well, because Vine's dead. I, I, I am a firm believer that if Vine did not get shut down, it'd still be very popular nowadays. The blue and black versus white and gold dress debate. Well, the answer is blue and black. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unexpected John Cena. That was one of the best memes. Oh my god, I loved that one. Shia LaBeouf screaming, just do it. Hipster culture? I'm not sure if it's still a thing or not, but seemed big when I was younger. Watching BuzzFeed videos and doing quizzes. Guys, what Disney princess are you? Fill out this quiz below. I I'm lying, there's no quiz. How many people here actually lived in 2015? Seeing comments like Harlem Shake, TikTok, Fidget Spinners, or Ugandan Knuckles. All wrong. Harlem Shake was 2013, TikTok was 2018, Fidget Spinners was 2016, I think. Fidget Spinners might have been 2017. Ugandan Knuckles was 2016, or 27. No, 2017. 2017, yeah. Ugandan Knuckles was 2017. Hotline Bling. It carried on in meme culture after 2015, but it's not super popular nowadays. Being able to comfortably pay my rent. The Whip in Nene. Awful song. Colorful 
full skinny jeans and denims. Miley, what's good? Celebrity beef. It's it's just simply the worst. Bottle flips. Bottle flips are still fun. I do bottle flips all the time still. Just like if I see a bottle that's like almost finished, I'll flip it and then I'll drink it. What song lyrics hit you the hardest? You can get addicted to a certain kind of sadness. Wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. Most of these songs, I don't know what they're from, so I'm just speaking the lines. I'm sorry. Feel free to tell me what they are in the comments section. In the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade, and he carries the reminders of every glove that laid him down and cut him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I'm leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. You got a fast car. Is it fast enough so we can fly away? We gotta make a decision, leave tonight or live and die this way. I wish I was special. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I ever had. Mr. Brightside, I don't get how people can really party to it. What older horror movie, 40 plus years old, still holds up? Alien is over 40 now, it's still a f***ing killer. The original Black Christmas and the opening for When a Stranger Calls. Yeah, and Carrie. The Changeling. The Thing. The Shining. In fact, the older it gets, the creepier it feels. Those zero CGI horror flicks definitely have a different feel from some of the modern ones. The Overlook feels eerie, even if nothing scary had happened. No one has mentioned my favorite. Night of the Living Dead. Still scares me. Poltergeist. The Exorcist still holds up to this day. Maybe it's the whole religious aspect, but I still know people who refuse to watch it again, even after seeing it years ago. What's some basic knowledge that a scary amount of people don't know? How to merge in traffic. How long it takes a semi-truck to stop. How to tell if food has gone bad. When I worked in a meat department, we got like one call a day from people saying, I bought this X days ago. Is it still good? Lady, I'm not there with you. This ain't a smell of phone. You're gonna have to use your own senses and brain on this one. That the scientific meaning of theory isn't what the colloquial sense means. First aid. How to spot an obvious scam. Look how many people fall for those clickbait articles and chain posts and propaganda and stuff. Antibiotics do not work on a virus. Evidence-based reasoning and what evidence means. Prove it. What about you prove it? Nope. What about you prove it? Don't bother wild animals. I'm sure it's just natural selection at this point, but the amount of stupid people I see walking up to wild creatures for video footage is irritating. Bonus point if the human gets hurt. That you should wait for people to get off the elevator when it arrives at your floor instead of cramming yourself in when the doors open, blocking their departure. And keep walking when you go through a door to step off an escalator. If you could remove one thing from the world, what would it be? Greed. Easily the best option. It'd solve so many problems all at once. Allergies. So many people will be thankful for the day that all allergies suddenly disappeared. Also, this means mosquito bites will not be itchy anymore because we are allergic to the mosquito spit they inject us with. Bed bugs. I was gonna say nuclear weapons, but yeah, f bed bugs. Poverty. It would solve an insane amount of other problems as well. Problems. Hey, shortened to the point. Greg. You know what you did, Greg. The live action last airbender film. Barriers that stop me from being able to use magic. Weekly repeated questions on r slash ask reddit. Putin. Gonna be Putin a stop to that. <laughs> Sorry. The root of all evil. Nessany? The U2 album Gifted by Apple that keeps coming back a decade later. The internet post 2004. Keep email and Wikipedia, ditch the rest. No thanks. I'd be out of a job. What are the most annoying corporate buzzwords or phrases that you're sick of? Our workers are part of our family. Or something along the lines of that. Yeah, no they're not. Just an excuse to be able to treat your coworkers and employees like garbage. We have values. No you don't. Willing to work in a fast paced environment. Ends up in a cubicle. Take a more holistic approach. A classic. If I knew what holistic means, I could make a joke about this. When someone refers to a request as an ask, and everything is an issue, must have excellent communication skills. What if they're just great communication skills, huh? Guess I'm screwed. It amazes me how many people can spew so much horse <laughs> and not even say a damn thing. Just recently, my manager started saying, does anyone have the bandwidth to help out? Every time I see or hear it, I get closer to destroying my computer. But do you have the bandwidth though? I love corporate buzzwords. You can send emails which sound intelligent without actually saying anything and just confuse everyone. It's especially funny if you are ESL working in an English speaking country, doing the needful for us all. Resources to describe human beings. You're twice as likely to disappear under mysterious circumstances if you refer to someone as a resource while they're sitting in a meeting with you. You can give one non-flying animal, apart from humans, the ability to fly. Which animal do you choose to maximize chaos? Penguin. Their rage has gone unchecked far too long. Giraffes. Cause let's just make them weirder. Pigs. Whole lot of people will have to eat their words. Sloth. I don't know if they'd be able to flap their wings fast enough to fly. Bears. Grizzly for that lovely plus of violence. Hippos. Kangaroos. Imagine one of those kicking in your bedroom window in the middle of the night. Cats. Poor birds. Whales. If I have to get specific, blue whales. You're gonna take the world's largest mammal currently and give it wings to make it fly? How is that a good idea? You tell me. Snakes. No thanks. Bulls. Specifically red ones. They would just give them away. Oh, yeah, because they'd give everyone wings. Yeah, that's the joke. Piranhas? Well, they are fish, so they 
probably wouldn't last out of the ocean very fast. Great white sharks. Centipedes. Can you imagine one of those mother <laughs> flying at you at 20 miles per hour? What's a movie that bombed at the box office but was actually good? The Shawshank Redemption. The Thing. Office Space. Idiocracy 2. Mike Judge doesn't tend to do well at the box office, but his films sure do have long-term relevance. There are hundreds, but Blade Runner comes to my mind at first. Treasure Planet. Contender for the best animated movie ever. Up there with the Iron Giant. The Edge of Tomorrow. Grandma's Boy. It's a Wonderful Life is probably the biggest example of this. It was an absolute flop at the box office. It almost killed the studio that made it. At one point, there was some debate about ownership of it, and nobody wanted it, so TV networks could air it without paying anyone. That's when it started getting shown on TV constantly around Christmas. It gained its status as one of the best Christmas movies of all time. Hook. It flopped at the box office and has 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I will always love that movie. Princess Bride. Which fast food will you not eat and why? I was a victim of the Chipotle E. coli outbreak. Never again. Subway. It smells weird. KFC. Their quality went way down. The chicken is way small for its high price. As a Canadian, I'm gonna put this out there. Tim Hortons. Burned coffee. <laughs> the factory made pastry products. Bagels are pretty bad as well. Taco Bell. I was in one when my brother died 17 years ago. I had a really good pizza and now normal pizza is no longer good enough for me. Chick-fil-A. Dairy Queen. Went to order an ice cream cake with my mom and she saw one of the employees wash the dishes, take out the garbage, and make the food all with the same gloves. Ew! <laughs> what? I'm gonna throw up, I think. That's disgusting. Jimmy John's, because the owner of the company is a huge twat and is just so bland. What is your favorite gas station snack? Me personally, I'm a big corn nuts guy. Specifically the ranch ones. I'm sure every one I eat is another two years off my life, but god damn it, there is something about gas station hot dogs that are just incredible. Pizza pretzel combos and a Pepsi. Iced honey buns. The beef stick cheese stick combo pack. I would, but I lack toes. Peach O-rings. They are so good and addicting and you can't eat just a few. The whole bag is required. Lifesaver gummies. Am I the only one who loves Funyuns? Haven't gotten it since before the pandemic, but my 100% go-to treat from a gas station while on the road were the peanut butter Twix bars. Team Corn Nuts represent. You know, Corn Nuts actually follows me on Twitter. Twitter is at Says Mason Live, by the way. Andy Caps Cheese Fries. Almost impossible to find, but they always smack. Combos. I love them. If you find yourself on stage with a microphone, you must entertain a crowd for the next 20 minutes. What do you do? Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you all for coming. Please give a warm welcome to the this guy from the audience. Then just sit down. <laughs> Giga Chad. Tell the timing joke. What's the key to a good joke? Wait 20 minutes in silence. Timing. Then walk away. Tell a story and hope it goes well. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. Perform Linkin Park's hybrid theory album start to finish. Braver than I am. Well, <sighs> Here goes my first attempt at stand-up comedy. Snacks and cigarettes are available in the lobby. The main show will begin in 20 minutes. While we wait, here's Wonderwall.